Yes, as Chris mentioned, St. Davis is on the back, back on the bench after injury, but it is still a lengthy absentee list of Tottenham teenagers, Alfie Devine and Romain Mundell, drafted in to make up the full complement of substitutes. So, we are ready to get underway at St. James's Park. The black and white flags, a few of them are still waving around us. A huge Away the Lads banner, away to our left, has been folded away and it will be Tottenham in their change strip of all teal to get us underway here at St James's Park, playing from left to right, Newcastle in their traditional home kit. The black and white shirts, the black shorts and the black socks. As Tottenham send it all the way back to Hugo Lloris, all in bright green this afternoon. Ball up towards the halfway line, flick forward towards Son Hyun Min. He's found a bit of form, Son. It's been a difficult season for him as it has been for Tottenham as a whole, looking to score for the third Premier League game running for the first time since May. Here is Oliver Skip for Tottenham in central midfield. Plays it forward intercepted by Bruno Guimaraes as the range just starts to drift down here at St James's Park. And we're yeah. not quite undercover, it's are we, Chris? It's a brilliant um, <laughs> location in it for the media. Um, right in, in the bottom of the stand there, when it rains, it's, uh, it makes a lot of sense to put here, doesn't it? Well, we'll keep the notes under the plastic partition that is in front of us and, and maybe duck the microphone under there as well. Here comes Joe Linton into the penalty area. Early doors for Newcastle trying to over in for the shot. Does shoot. Saved by Lloris. Comes down on the angles and fired into the top corner. What a start for Newcastle United. Jacob Murphy slides on his knees and celebrates with the fans because Newcastle United have hit the front against Tottenham in the opening two minutes. Fantastic start for Eddie Howe's side. A fantastic finish into the top corner and the worst possible start for Tottenham Hotspur. Well, I've got to say, Vicky, we were talking about the defence before the game. Joe Linton picks up. He doesn't do any tricks. He cuts inside Porro. Romario just lets him go past him. Doesn't put a foot at him. Doesn't put anything at him. It's a basic shot at the bottom corner. Lloris gets down and saves it. And who reacts? It's, you know, it's a sloppy start. But as I said before the game, this back four today, it's just the risk written all over it. And that's it. It's a smart stop from Hugo Lloris. But Newcastle United, the quickest to react. It's a great finish on the angle. Just dinks it into that top corner. And Newcastle United with the perfect start at St James's Park. And Eddie Howe talked, didn't he, after they lost 3-0 to Aston Villa in their last match about needing a response. He said it was the first time all season that their overall performance levels had just dipped. And they've got the perfect start here in the northeast against oh, unbelievable start well uh, you know you're looking at a very fragile Tottenham Hotspur here but they are coming down the right hand side Tottenham with Oliver Skip won by Newcastle just outside their own penalty area and played crossfield by Bruno Guimaraes it's a poor ball from the Brazilian it's straight out of play for a Tottenham throw which Ivan Perisic will come up to take I mean what is there three minutes gone it's hard to analyze Tottenham switched to the back four they, they just switched off in the penalty area there oh, there's no challenge Sheldon's not doing any tricks he's not running at you a pace he's not doing step overs he's not dropping the shoulder he just moves the ball it's a simple shot no pressure Lloris gets down to his left hand side and it's a simple tapping I guess it's a good finish it's a difficult angle but you'd expect him to score you know this is a very fragile Tottenham Hotspur and as I said to me you play a defenders you know I, I'm agreeing with playing a back four for Tottenham I definitely am but put people in the right places so Newcastle in possession Bruno Guimaraes out to the right hand side leading already by a goal to nil in this match that feels so significant for Champions League qualification for both of these sides here is Alexander Isak out to the right hand side receives the ball back inside the penalty area Isak still going still going Ball across is blocked on the edge of the six-yard box, but he's won the corner. And listen to the roar from St James's Park as Isak waves his hands. They're loving this. Well, I'm, I'm very surprised with Tottenham's uh, tempo they're playing at. The back four is absolutely all over the place at the minute. So corner to Newcastle. We'll be heading to Bournemouth very shortly where there has been a goal in the match with West Ham. But we'll see this corner for Newcastle first, looking to double their advantage inside the opening five minutes. It's swung in high, flicked across by Tottenham, not really dealt with 
out to Bruno Guimaraes on this left hand side Guimaraes edge of the penalty area whips a low ball in cleared away by Romero but really doesn't get the distance on it help forward once more by Newcastle out to the right hand side intercepted by Pape Sar. but Newcastle will get there through Longstaff and they have it once more on the right hand side Newcastle building here comes Willock, lays it off to Longstaff, he's taken up that right wing position. Lays it off to Trippier, ball into the area, cleared away by the head of Romero and Dyer will help it up towards halfway, but they just cannot get out of their own penalty area at the moment, Tottenham, let alone their own half. Son Heung Min charging down Trippier, who is forced backwards. So let's head to Bournemouth, news of that goal, which way's it gone, John Akers? Big goal at the bottom for West Ham United. Corner from the left hand side, Cresswell's corner. Remarkable at St James's Park. Joe Ellington into the penalty area and it's 2 0 already inside the opening six minutes for Newcastle against Tottenham. Chris Waddle, Spurs are falling apart. Oh, no, falling apart, I think they fell apart. They, they, they're all over the shop. It was a simple ball. Romario again for me. He just doesn't look like he's got his head on. It doesn't look like he doesn't look interested. It drops behind him. Poro should chase Joe Linton. He doesn't. He lets him run and give Joe Linton credit. Great take. Great first touch around Lloris. Rolls it into an empty net. I've got to say, we said about Tottenham playing a back four. It was a risk today with the two full backs have got. The biggest problem at the minute is Romario. He is all over the shop. And we're talking about a World Cup winner here, by the way. Well, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> Inside the opening six minutes, Newcastle lead Tottenham by two goals to nil. Huge double clench fist celebration from Bruno Guimaraes, celebrating that Joe Linton goal in the centre circle as Tottenham kick off again. Three times in the opening seven minutes, once they kick off, twice after the goals. What does Christian the, Cellini do here on the touchline? You line? come to a place like this and you know exactly what you get. I mean, I, 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 Tottenham... What, what are Tottenham players thinking? They're going to come here and sit on the ball and do what they want with the ball. You know Newcastle with this passionate crowd are out the blocks quick. They're after you. They want to press. They want to get the crowd behind them. And Tottenham have not matched them. Simple as that. Ball is cleared out of play by Pedro Porro. It's a Newcastle throw. And you called it before the match, Chris. Exactly what you said there. You know that Newcastle are going to start like this. And the frustration for Tottenham fans. I mean, as we heard before the match you know several of them have been crying out for Tottenham to switch to this back four to be more attacking but to do it here at St James's Park against the side that are huge rivals for qualifying for the Champions League when you don't have Ben Davis back to full fitness to put in it's a risk and it has hugely not paid off and that's an understatement for Tottenham in the opening eight minutes they trail by two goals to nil here on Five Live and Newcastle looks so dangerous every time they come forward Burn is dispossessed. Guimaraes has it on the edge of the centre circle. Out to the right-hand side. And Trippier, no let-up whatsoever for Eddie Howe's side as the ball in from Trippier is poor. Intercepted by Oliver Skip and Harry Kane will pick it up. Sends it out to the right-hand side. And Kulisevsky. And look, Chris, we're eight minutes in and already it's starting to think, look, does Stellini need to change it? I mean, he's got the centre-halves on the bench if he wants to go to the three. Listen, I think midfield, it's quite uh, all right. Uh, as I said before the game, the back four for me, no, not this level of football. You can't risk with a back four like that. Uh, we know Tottenham have got goals in them. Harry Kane, Son, well, is it, oh, they've lost position cheaply again. They've won the ball again and a driving shot is in! Oh, this is unbelievable! Murphy, Murphy once more, his second of the game. Newcastle United third inside the opening nine minutes. Goodness me, Chris Waddle, he didn't even know how to celebrate because he is as stunned as the rest of this delirious St James's Park. Newcastle United lead Tottenham by three goals to nil and we've not even played nine minutes. I've got to say, we're talking about Tottenham all the time here. Yeah? Let's talk about Newcastle. How good have they been from the kickoff? And it's not been hard for them because Tottenham have just laid down and said, you can have this result. It's absolutely embarrassing. I see some Tottenham fans are already leaving. They've only been in the game 10 minutes and some of them have started walking out. And I don't blame them. This is not accepted by Tottenham Hotspur. We're talking about a big club here. Great support. Give Newcastle credit. They are very professional. They've come out. They've asked questions and they've got rewards. It's game over. It's 3-0 now. And how many is it going to be? 
And what a goal that was, by the way. 30 yards. Larice didn't even move. Stunner. Stunner from Jacob Murphy. And we haven't even played 10 minutes. And as Chris Waddle says, we're looking away to those Spurs fans up to our left. The vast majority of them have stayed. But goodness me, this is remarkable. One of the most remarkable scorelines of this Premier League season, of any Premier League season, as the flag goes up and for once, Jacob Murphy doesn't get the well, rub of the green and for once something got, goes Tottenham's way. He's got to change it. He's got to go back to a three. He's got to bring a centre. He's got to bring, uh, he's got to put somebody into the back three and make a three. This is definitely not working. Romario's getting exposed quite easily. Day hasn't, well, he's doing okay down out of the four. Two full-backs, they're not full-backs, they're wing-backs. It, 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 you know, they're attacking players. It's so easy for Newcastle, so easy. So 3-0, Newcastle United lead Tottenham here. In the Premier League's other two o'clock kickoff, just the one goal so far, West Ham scoring early on against Bournemouth. The Son runs in behind, Nick Pope comes out to the edge of his area and claims that. For me, when you play a four and a 4-3-3, four, three, three, it's about pressing, it's about pressing up the park. That's the first time I've saw. Look, there's no pressure on the ball. They've come out. They're in again down the left-hand side. And there's here no... is Joe Linton. He has Joe Willock ahead of him. Collects the ball. Left-hand side. Zinks it in. Looking for Alexander Isak. Challenged by Oliver Skip. And Tottenham will play the ball around on the edge of their own penalty area. I'm not sure I'd be doing that. And they almost play Isak in. Start with the ball back to Lloris. Isak almost latching onto it. Lloris sends the ball straight out of play. And we just saw their animated discussion on the touchline between Ryan Mason and Christian Stellini. But because as you say, Chris, I mean, they've, they've got to change something. But the game is gone. The game yes. is gone. They're 3-0 down. It's 12 uh, minutes Vicky, gone. It's, it's, you know, you're, you're playing a four in the first game. So they may you press, you make it hard. How, how easy? I mean, Newcastle are playing well. I'm not not in Newcastle at all. They're playing. It's so easy for them. And here they come once more. Kieran Trippier's ball to the edge of the area. Laid off by Isak. Will be picked up by Bruno Gimaraes. 25 yards out. Plays the ball forward. And the, the groan of disappointment there. Where Newcastle don't latch onto it. It's out for a Tottenham goal kick. Goal at Bournemouth. John Akers. And it's a second for West Ham United. Very similar to the first. Across from the right from open play. Pakata is completely unmarked at the far post. Downward header into the back of the net from six yards after Antonio had done the same for the first goal for West Ham from a corner from Cresswell. Bournemouth nil, West Ham two. Thanks, John. What a dramatic start to proceedings in the Premier League here this afternoon. In the WSL, goals going in as well. Reading are leading Everton by a goal to nil. And Aston Villa are 1-0 up at Tottenham Hotspur. Things going very badly for Spurs here as well in the northeast. They trail by three goals to nil. Oliver Skip, though, bursting down the right-hand side, cuts it across into the penalty area. Harry Kane whistles a shot just wide. But he's got a great record here at St James's Park. And he wasn't too far away there as Tottenham desperately looked to get some form of a toehold in this game. Yeah, it was a great ball by Porro. Great run by Skip down in the channel. He pulls it back, Harry Kane. Normally, Harry Kane puts that in. It went by about... It missed the post by about, what, inches? So... That was a lot better by Tottenham, but unfortunately, as we talk, you're talking about, it's 12, nearly 13 minutes gone and it's game over for me. So, goal kick for Newcastle United. So we mentioned that conversation that Ryan Mason and Christian Stellini were having with the help of monitors. He has been seeing Ryan Mason, a bit of what he was saying, this has got to stop. And I mean, that, that pretty much sums it up for Tottenham, but they're struggling to stop Newcastle once again. Joe Willock trying to get in behind. Ball is sent back to Hugo Lloris who does clear out to this right-hand side. Kulisevsky's touch, though, will take it out for a Newcastle United throw. Well, Newcastle must have dreamt of this. What a start with Eddie Howe's team. I mean, they must have thought it's going to be a tough game. They're fighting for fourth, and it's been so easy. 3-0. 3-0. Newcastle United lead here on five live. As Harry Kane comes down the right-hand side, up against Bruno Gimaraes. Oliver Skip now picks it up towards the penalty area. He goes, interception by Gimaraes and Joe Linton between them. And the Brazilians work the ball away outside the Newcastle penalty area to the right-hand side. Here is Kieran Trippier. Plays it back to Fabian Scher. Chester down by Jacob Murphy on the halfway line. Challenged by Eric Dyer. Advantage play, but then Trippier is pulled back over on the far side. And it will be a free kick to Newcastle just inside their own half. Well, I'll tell you what, we, as we just watched Eddie Howe going back to his 
technical area and sitting down in the dugout. We talk about the fact Stellini needs to change it. But I'm sure in all the plans that Eddie Howe had for this match, you know, plan A, plan B, plan C, he would not have considered being this dominant, this far ahead, 3-0 up so early on. No, definitely not. He'd have knew this way. He thought this would have been a real tough game. You've got to be patient. Yes, play your game. We all knew Castle play now. Quite high tempo. They like to get in your faces. They try and play uh, up the field as high as they can. Um, and I can't believe Tottenham didn't know this was going to happen. I mean, it's been so easy for, uh, for Newcastle. Bruno Gimmerich wins the free kick just inside the Tottenham half. Tottenham shell-shocked. What will this do? Not just for their Champions League hopes, but for the rest of the season. They've been decimated in the opening 15 minutes here at St James's Park. Newcastle United 3 Tottenham nil, one for Joe Linton, two for Jacob Murphy, and they're coming forward again down the right-hand side. Here is Alexander Isak, the club record signing. He's in very good form himself at the moment. He'll certainly fancy a goal against this Tottenham back four. Works it out to the right-hand side. Here is Trippier. Murphy picks it up once again on a hat-trick. Jacob Murphy lays it off to Bruno Gimaraes. Down to the right once more. Trippier's ball in, deflected behind. Newcastle corner, and they just look so dangerous every time they come Playing forward. Playing a good tempo. One, two, touch football. A lot of options, a lot of movement, a lot of confidence. And you can see in the Tottenham shirts, there is no confidence in many players. So, so far, Newcastle obviously well in command. 3-0 up, 15 minutes gone. And with a corner... Could it get even worse for Tottenham this early on at St James's Park? It's swung in high it's towards Botman, who does head it across. Longstaff on the volley, miscue. Botman trying to keep it alive on the edge of the area, but inadvertently plays it to Son, who's off on the counter for Tottenham, but Botman does well. Good covering, sends it back to Nick Pope just outside his penalty area. Newcastle 3, Tottenham there. The males ahead. You know, they look sharper, confidence. They look everything about their game compared to Tottenham. Tottenham running out of ideas. They're coming down the right-hand side with Pedro Porro. What do you do as a player out there if you're Tottenham to, Listen, to the, try the, the, and get your head in the game? It's basics. It's not about, you know, yeah, we can talk about they shouldn't have played a four the day. They haven't got the players and they shouldn't have. In my eyes, I want them, I, like, uh, I think they should play a four when everybody's fit. But today they've, they've took a risk, uh, but it's legwork. It's honesty. Go and close people down. Go and mark the player you're going against. Go and make it difficult. So easy for Newcastle the first 10 minutes. It was, I mean, you could have played out there the first 10 minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Former Newcastle, Tottenham and England winger Chris Waddle here with us on Five Live. On a remarkable afternoon so far for Newcastle in the North East. 3-0 they lead Tottenham. The ball is played forward by Pedro Porro and Eddie Howe comes out to the edge of his technical area. Applauding as well he might. <laughs> There's almost... I mean, the noise hasn't let up inside St James's Park, but there is almost this sense of, of disbelief. You look around, and particularly after that third goal, fans were having conversations with each other. D the delight on their faces, the complete disbelief, because we talk about Tottenham, we talk about how poor their form's been, how inconsistent they are, how you never know what Tottenham's going to turn up, although you do of late. Not a very good one. But nobody, nobody could have predicted this. 3-0, 18 minutes played, Newcastle lead. Harry Kane in possession, plays it back to Papa Mate Saren. Just for once, a little bit of the zip and the energy just slows down. As Tottenham try and reinvigorate that down the right-hand side of Kulisevsky. He's dispossessed, played forward by Gimaraes and Willock. Ball is a brilliant one, looking for Isak, who's in behind Alexander Isak to make it four! Remarkable! Alexander Isak! Makes it Newcastle United 4, Tottenham nil inside the opening 19 minutes. And surely Newcastle United are storming towards the Champions League this season. And Tottenham's hopes are dwindling ever further. Newcastle lead by four goals to nil. I've got to say, Joe Willock's pass is absolutely outstanding. The two centre-halves again, Dyer and Romero, all over the shop. He's just running behind. What a pass by Willock. What a great ball. And it's a great finish. He takes it, two touches, rolls it in the corner. Nothing to do. Tottenham now are grouping together. They're changing shape. They're going to a back three, I think. And they've got to do something because this could be absolutely... It's embarrassing now. And we've only played 
well, what we played, 20 minutes, not even that. So it's literally embarrassing. And he's now they've decided to change it. What goes through the what what goes through the coaches' heads to come to this game and play and take a risk? And now you're four 0 down. All the people who've travelled from all over the country to come and watch Tottenham. It's absolutely embarrassing. And looking away high in the sand to our left, some of them are now leaving in earnest Tottenham. It's a long trip back to London. Newcastle leads by four goals to nil. They've won a free kick. Well, they've gone to a three, look. They've put Porro as a right sider. You've got Tanganga on the bench. Take Porro off. You should have started with Tanganga right back anyway. But never mind. Perisic has been a winger all his life. He's 34, 35 years of age and they decided to play him left back. What's going on? And Jacob Murphy down that right-hand side has scored two of the goals and therein lies the problem and they're coming in down the right again. Newcastle into the area. The long shot is driven in. 5-0, Alexander Isak with his second of the game. I don't believe this. I do not believe this. Inside the opening 21 minutes, Newcastle United 5, Tottenham 0. Well, I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. I really feel sorry about the Tottenham fans. I've got to say Newcastle, absolutely brilliant. Attitude, work rate, commitment. Eddie House seemed brilliant today, Newcastle. And I'm not taking anything away from them, but... No disrespect, Tottenham are absolutely a shambles. It's totally embarrassing for a club that size. Listen, Newcastle are capable of beating a lot of teams 4, 5, 6 nil. we know that. Coming here, fifth in the league, three points behind. Literally embarrassing. Honestly, I'm almost speechless. And I think the fans around us, and you can hear it in the announcer's voice as well, the score again, this the is just Alexander. ridiculous. I've got to say, to Mickey, though, you can blame the manager. The manager shouldn't be here. I'm not blaming him for today. I, when you get rid of the manager, if the assistant plays the same way, what was the point of getting rid of the manager originally? I don't get that. So you put somebody else in charge. But you've got to look at them players. And I hope the, the supporters and everybody else, yes, dig the manager out if you want about the system, the way he's played today. But dig them players out. You're talking about a World Cup winner medal at centre half. Daya International, Poro International, Harry Kane, record goal scorers. It, it's, you know, Swedish International, Kalitsky, Son, South Korea. It, we're talking about international players who play Champions League football. So as he played Champions League finals. Blame the players, because they're not putting a shift in. If you don't put a shift in, you deserve all the stick you're going to get, and you'll get a lot. Ball out of play by Dan Byrne. Kulisevsky takes it. Kulisevsky, who is now playing at right wing back for Tottenham. But nothing they do seems to be able to stop Newcastle, who lead by five goals to nil. Harry Kane coming forward, wins the corner off Dan Byrne. You know, he's a player, Kane, that you'd look to for leadership. Of course you would, but, but even he must be thinking, I'm not, he won't have ever played in a game like this. I can't remember a game like this between two teams that, as you say, are both going for the Champions League, three points in it between them, and midway through the first half, Tottenham are trailing by five goals to nil, and finally, the change is made by Christian Cellini. Talk about closing the stable door after the horse has bolted, but Pape Matassar uh, is off, uh, Davinson Sanchez is on, Davinson Sanchez, who of course was booed by his own fans in the defeat by Bournemouth last weekend, came on as a sub, got subbed off again, Let's hope it's not an afternoon like that for him once more, but it's one of those afternoons and then some for Tottenham. He's up to attack this corner. So they do now go to the three at the back with the centre-half rather than just having Kulisevsky filling in and Saar dropping back. But I feel the same by Saar. He's took him off because he's the youngest player. Why don't you take Olberg off? Why don't you take uh, somebody else off? Why, why are you taking the young player off? So goal. Corner comes across from Toro. Newcastle have a player down in the area. It's gone out of the penalty area, picked up on the left-hand side. Now Oliver Skip will have it for Tottenham. Out to the left, he goes once more, and Hoybier. The game is up. It is so up for Tottenham already. Midway through the first half, almost 24 minutes gone, 5-0. Newcastle United lead. Harry Kane wins the header just inside the Newcastle half. Sent forward once again. Trippier is there. Now Kimmerich. Every time Newcastle come forward, they seem to score at the moment. Can they do so again? Joe Linton out to the left-hand side. There's Porro there with him. Joe Linton plays it back, looking for Willock, who collects just inside the Tottenham half and now squares it to 
Bruno Kimmerich. Botman once more. Lays it off to Cher. And now Botman is... <laughs> Eddie Howe, you wonder what's going through his mind. <laughs> he won't have seen anything like this. I'm not sure any of us have. Out to the right-hand side. Kieran Trippier has it for Newcastle, who lead by five goals to nil against Tottenham. Kimmerich urged to shoot on the angle from 30 yards. Won't do so from there. But the way that everything's going for Newcastle, through their own good work, might well go in as Kimmerich tried to slide through to Willock inside the penalty area. Cleared away by Tottenham and Son and Kane are off on the counter. Kane over the halfway line, feeds Son. Good ball. Out to the left-hand side. Botman's there. Son into the penalty area. Has the option of Kulisevsky. Now does slide it into the penalty area. And the deflection of Fern takes it behind for a Tottenham corner. Newcastle 5, Tottenham 0. Well, Son there showing what he's good at. Good pace, cuts and say. Wants to get the shot. Can it? Newcastle get the bodies around him. Rolls it, just gets cut out. They've got a corner, which will give them a little bit of a breather. Kummer is, uh, is limping. Uh, he's, we know he's had problems with his ankle the last few months. Uh, it looks like he's got a problem again with it. But they can afford to rest them. It's 5 0 up. It's amazing. To be honest, they could take four players off, and I think yeah. they'd still be fine. Newcastle, or six now, of course, as you can make the five. But Gimarache is walking over to the touchline. The physio is on, but will apply the treatments off the pitch. And Tottenham will prepare to take this corner. They've got the short option here. No black and white shirt over there to close it down. Newcastle won't want to switch off despite the five goal leads. They look to defend this clean sheet as Kulisevsky into the area. Nice footwork, curls over behind for a Newcastle goal kick. That was a good, good uh, you know, he did well. He beat two men, but he just couldn't get the shot on target. He tried to whip it into that far corner. Obviously, he got his foot under it. It's gone high into the, uh, the Gallagher end, but uh, well, they've changed it now. They've gone to that three. Um, you know, you just think yeah, everybody's asking Tom to play in a four. Why take a risk in a massive game like this away from home? when you haven't got the players defensively fit enough. So, in the Premier League's other two o'clock kickoff, it's still West Ham leading by two goals to nil at Bournemouth and Reading in the WSL are now two nil up against Everton. St James's Park, jubilant. Newcastle have been outstanding. They lead five nil here on Five Live against the Champions League rivals Tottenham. They won't be rivals after this game. You, you've got to feel that now. The ball is down the right-hand side looking for Murphy. Plays it in. Porro, good header with Joe Linton lurking. Flicks it away and Willock will allow it to run for the Newcastle corner. Great pace again. Change of pace in the attack by Newcastle. A lot of options. Murphy chips it up the far post. Porro heads it away for the corner. But they look sharp all over the park, Newcastle. Aston Villa in the WSL now leading Spurs by two goals to one. And it's goalless between Liverpool and Brighton as Joe Willock will leave it to the set-piece specialist, Kieran Trippier. The black and white shirts pack the penalty area once more, looking to add a sixth goal against Tottenham inside the opening 28 minutes. If you've just turned on your radio, you have heard that right. Trippier with the corner, headed away at the near post by Hoybier. Willock will send it back in. Was he caught there? Yes, he was by Kulisevsky. And that's a yellow card for Dayan Kulisevsky. And that was just sheer frustration, Chris Waddle. Yeah, it was. Uh, the clear the corner and he doesn't need to. They actually had a good chance of a counter-attack there, but uh, he gives away a silly free kick uh, on Willock. Uh, and he gets himself a yellow card. 5-0 down, 27-28 played and a yellow card. Bruno Gimaraes is back onto the pitch for Newcastle, walking a little gingerly, but as you say, there's no way they take any chances with him whatsoever. Such an important player and leading by five goals to nil, what Eddie Howe has all the luxury that he needs this afternoon. Newcastle will, and we haven't even played half an hour, Newcastle will be going six points clear of Tottenham with a game in hand. Can they make it six before the half hour mark here is Kieran Trippier standing over this ball swings it into the penalty area it's poor it's claimed by Hugo Lloris poor delivery by Trippier too much on it not enough pace too high very easy for Lloris to come and catch that and obviously the Tottenham fans sarcastically cheer it but uh, which you can understand their frustration well I would say a good proportion of them have stayed away high in the stands to our left and credit to them it's been a shambles, it's been embarrassing, take your pick. We threw all the cliches before this game, didn't we, in terms of how big the game was, but pick your superlative for how shocking Spurs have been. 
And Newcastle, as you say, Chris, as Tottenham have it inside their own half, have been brilliant. They've been so clinical. I mean, yes, Tottenham have been woeful in terms of their defending, regardless of what formation they've been playing at the back. But Newcastle so clinical. Two for Murphy, two for Isak, one for Joe Linton. As Burns sprints to try and close down Porro. Tottenham coming forward down the right-hand side. Ball is played to Son, miscue, and then Kane miscues as that ball came to him just outside the six-yard box. And Newcastle will clear away. That's a couple of occasions down this right-hand side. Tottenham going forward have had a little bit of joy there. Harry Kane should hit that with his right foot. He's trying to take it with his left, hit it with his right. If he hits it first time, good chance of a goal there. But Tottenham have responded a little bit, but... Uh, you would. You've got to work harder, and they are now, but it's too late. Very much so. 5 0 they trail as we approach the half hour mark here on Five Live. As the foot in from Dan Byrne, they're saying that should be a goal kick. It got a touch of Kulisevsky, and the assistant on this near side agrees. And Nick Pope will take this goal kick for Newcastle. Let's head back to Bournemouth against West Ham. John Akers. I'll make it quick, Vicky. Don't worry. Bournemouth nil, West Ham two. It's been good here as well. Antonio and Paqueta with the goals here. Solanke's just had a chance, saved by Fabianski with his legs. Maybe should have cut it back. Bournemouth just starting to find their stride. Bournemouth nil, West Ham two. It's all right, John. Nick Pope's taking a while over this goal kick for once. So let's head for an update from the Super League. Salford Catalan, Safewood. 30 minutes played. Salford lead by four points to nil. First uh, real attack of the day. King Vuni Yayawa driving through and then bursting one tackle and bouncing over. Kick to come. Sneed will put this over. It's right in front of the sticks. So it'll be 6 0 in just a moment. Thanks, David. In the Women's Champions League semi final first leg, Wolfsburg against Arsenal has just kicked off. We'll keep you updated with Maz Faruqi from that match as Joe Linton grimaces. The ball bounces off him and into the hands of Christian Stellini. What can he do? Well, uh, the only thing here is Tottenham's coming into the game a little bit because, let's be honest, when you're 5 0 up, you do come off the pace a little bit because it's so easy. And Newcastle are doing that. Tottenham have had a lot of ball the last five minutes. Uh, two half chances probably they've had in the game so far Tottenham but you know Newcastle have just done enough they've won the game already so you know that tempo what they started with they've just come off it now and Dan Byrne wins the header midway inside the Tottenham half cleared away by Kulisevsky who was caught there by Joe Linton and it will be a free kick to Tottenham just inside their own half yeah, and you, as I said, it, the game's sort of levelling now since uh, Tottenham brought Sanchez on. Um, they've got uh, the, the normal three at the back and, you know, Stellini's got to look at this and think, why didn't I start this? And if it wasn't working, I could change it. He's, he's put a lot of pressure on Poro and Perisic for me. Um, you know, they've not played it for, I can't remember the last time Tottenham played a back four. So you've got to ask questions about that, as I said, the, the, the size of the game at Newcastle away it was a big risk and it's backfired. Newcastle with the throw, midway inside the Tottenham half. Newcastle, who with 32 minutes gone, lead by five goals to nil against Tottenham, whose Champions League hopes are in tatters. You can't see them coming back from this. They'll be six points behind Newcastle, having played a game more as well. Yes, they can look at trying to close down Manchester United as well, but, but it's not just the points now, Chris, it's the the damaging nature of this performance and what will be this defeat? Uh, listen, uh, they've got Man United in Liverpool next to them. I mean, what, where did they go from there? Here they come, outside the penalty area. Son's back heel is intercepted and Gimaraes will bring it forward. Oliver Skip with the challenge. Gimaraes down, Newcastle free kick. I mean, where do they go from there? I mean, I think that's the wider question, isn't it? Well, you summed it up perfectly. I mean, Tottenham. listen, I don't think they can play an open 20 minutes worse than they've played today. I, uh, you've got to get your system right and uh, it's don't attitude of players. Work rate, that's first base. You expect that. When you put a shirt on, you expect players to graft and give everything. Then that a bit of ability and the skills they've got, then that comes into play. Tottenham walked out that tunnel today for the first 15 20 minutes they just never turned up and it was so easy for Newcastle heavy challenge by Skip on Kima Race, and that will be the yellow card for Oliver Skip joining Kulisevsky in the book a couple of crunching tackles on Kima Race. you did have that little spell down injured as well so Eddie Howe I'm sure will not be pleased to see those going in I think I don't think Gumnias would uh, would like to come off anyway I think he likes playing football doesn't he whether well, he's got an ankle and you think look we'll rest you we've got games coming up now this one's won um, I think he'll, he'll want to play so Newcastle in possession leading by five goals to nil here on five live West Ham 2-0 up at Bournemouth in the Premier League's 
other kickoff. And a reminder, we will have commentary of the second FA Cup semi-final of the weekend for you from Wembley. Brighton against Manchester United at 4.30. Incidentally, if you want to listen to commentary of Bournemouth against West Ham, that is over on Sports Extra. Tottenham with the throw over on the far side as Davinson Sanchez watches on, having been brought on by Christian Stellini to switch to this back three. Hoybier advancing down the left-hand side. Good sliding challenge by... Fabian Scher. Well, there haven't been too many questions over Newcastle's form this season, but there were some asked after the defeat by Aston Villa. They just couldn't cope with the pace of Ollie Watkins, who had another outstanding game. But Eddie Howe looked for a reaction, expected a reaction, and it couldn't have been more perfect. And in terms of momentum going into the final charge, that final push for the Champions League for Newcastle, they have it in abundance once more. There's Willock, lovely little back heel in the centre circle. Bruno Guimaraes sliding in, won't quite reach Joe Linton. Good defending by Christian Romero as Lloris plays the ball out to Davinson Sanchez and now out on the right-hand side to Porro. Under pressure, plays it back to Romero once again. Closed down by Jacob Murphy. Murphy and Isak both on a hat-trick for Newcastle this afternoon here on Five Live. Here is Eric Dyer, centred out to the left-hand side and Perisic and back to Dyer once more as... Eddie Howe watches on on the edge of his technical area. Ball is back with Christian Romero. Sends it back to Hugo Lloris. Close down by Isak. And Lloris will play the ball straight out of play. Out to the right-hand side it goes. Throw to Newcastle. Taken by Kieran Trippier. And the ball is all the way back now with Fabian Scher and square to Sven Botman. <laughs> for, for once, Chris, 36 minutes gone, leading 5-0. Newcastle just look as though they're not quite sure what level to keep playing this game at in terms of well, energy. You know, the atmosphere has changed as well, hasn't it? The atmosphere has changed as well because Newcastle fans turn up the other day, I think, and wow, what a massive game. Whoever wins this is, you know, it's a big confidence boost, Aaron. And because Newcastle have gone 5 0 up now, it's sort of the atmosphere has dropped as if to think, well, who do we play next? Because this game's finished. Well, Newcastle in possession. I can tell you, Everton away, Southampton home, Arsenal at home, Leeds away, Brighton home, Leicester home and Chelsea away. That is Newcastle's run-in. A run-in that with this result has such a good chance of taking them into the Champions League for next season as they come down the right-hand side now. Perisic in with the challenge on Longstaff. Tottenham clear away. Referee David Coop not interested in terms of any penalty appeals, which rather came from the fans than the players. As Kulisewski commits another foul, this time on Dan Byrne. Got to be careful on a yellow card. I mean, of all the things that you don't, <laughs> don't need to get yeah, worse for yeah. Tottenham, Kulisewski players, yeah. getting sent off. And one skips of on one as well, isn't he? So they've got to watch themselves. Uh, listen, whether Newcastle's dropped off the pace, uh, Tottenham have come into the game a little bit more. Uh, I just can't get over the start, that first 15, 20 minutes. It was amazing. I've never seen a team really uh, collapse. Collapse is exactly what Tottenham did and they're creaking once again. Murphy down the right-hand side. Good sliding challenge by Perisic. It's out for a corner. Well, Perisic is saying that came off Murphy. But the assistant on the far side disagrees and Newcastle have taken the corner quickly. Tottenham need to stay switched on here. 5-0 Newcastle lead. Longstaff's ball into the area. Intercepted by Perisic. Harry Kane, though, can't control that ball out. And it will be picked up by Guimaraes. Just to shoot once again. Tries to play the ball into the area. Blocked away by Huibier. Dink back to Jacob Murphy and he will send it across to Joe Willock Newcastle 5 Tottenham 0 here on 5 Live one of the most remarkable halves of football I've seen in my career it's been unbelievable from Newcastle it's been unbelievable from Tottenham in a very very different sense Guimaraes the LA's are coming up that, that's oh, the only surprise oh, they haven't oh, come out before oh, uh, you don't blame them that's 8 goals in not even 1.5 games Tottenham's conceded in a week 8 goals yeah, the 3-2 defeat by Bournemouth, so damaging, this is even worse. Here is Guimaraes, midway through the Tottenham half, out to the right-hand side. The Newcastle fans loving this at St James's Park. A couple of step-overs from Jacob Murphy, trying to pull it back to Guimaraes. Big booze, it was a poor ball, and didn't reach the Brazilian, but Tottenham almost playing themselves into trouble. They have done long stuff just outside the area. Bad challenge, Willock keeps playing, advantage was played. Willock fires over, now long stuff is saying, well, why didn't I get the free kick? Yeah, David Coote says, I played the advantage because it was a great opportunity for Willock and he fires got over. It right. Free got it right. Yes, it was a free kick on Longstaff, and but 
Willock was in such a good position. He's played the advantage. Unfortunately, he's missed the target. Now you can't ask for the free kick. You've asked, you got the advantage. Uh, but he's staying there. He's just getting up now. We just look at the body language of Tottenham. I mean, there's players out there. They just don't look as if they want to be out there. And it's it was that was from the first minute, by the way. I'm not just on about now. Well, that's it. Can he blame them in some ways after 5-0? But it was the way that Tottenham started and the way that Newcastle started as well. As Hugo Lloris takes this goal kick, launches it up towards halfway. As the rain begins to team I've down got, got to at say, St James's Park. Newcastle have been uh, brilliant so far. Um, but if you're sitting in a media area when you've got up, oh, they're in again. No, they're, they're coming not. forward again. Almost. Joe Willock cleared away by Hugo Lloris. When you sit in a media area... <laughs> Surely you expect a little bit of protection from the rain. I mean, everybody in front of her is absolutely soaked. I mean, surely they can get a better position than this. Well, I found an umbrella and I put it up and Chris Waddle and I are huddling underneath it because we don't want to block the view of the fans behind. So one negative you've got to say about St James's Park. Out to the right-hand side go Newcastle on what is a superb afternoon for Eddie Howe's side five minutes to go until half time and, and it's one of these where normally you'd say the break can't come soon enough for Tottenham it, it's not the break the end of the match can't come soon exactly. enough for Tottenham it's 90 minutes to one Willock down the left hand side Newcastle five Tottenham nil Willock still going brilliant run this is shot in the end is curled over Hoybier sliding in got a deflection goes behind and Hoybier is screaming at Kulusevski there He's giving him a real look over his shoulder. Well, the thing for Kulusevski, as we've just mentioned, he's on a yellow card, Kulusevski. Yeah, he at, can't go diving in, but it's just frustration well, bubbling over for Tottenham. But you want to see that from yeah, their players. And well, we haven't even seen that frustration The Joe so Willock goes past Porro as if he's not there. You know, why is he not having to go at Porro? You know, unless he goes past Kulusevski, he's just saying he's on a yellow, he's worried about tackling. Why can't Porro tackle him? He just lets him cut and save and shoot. So corner to Newcastle United. Looking for their sixth goal of the half against Tottenham. It's a cross looking for the run of Longstaff. Flicked away before it will be collected by Isak off a Tottenham head. And it is a Newcastle throw. Let's hit for an update from Wolfsburg against Arsenal. Women's Champions League semi-final Masferuki. Goalless in the early stages. No England captain Leah Williamson for Arsenal, of course. No Germany captain either in Alexandra Pott for Wolfsburg. She is missing today and watching in the stands, but the German champions have started well. Jons Dottier trying to get into a ball forward, but Zinsberger had to be quick off a line to come out and gather. Trippier's Wolfsburg ball into the area and the header just across goal from Sean Longstaff, collected by Joe Linton. Newcastle in the mood for a sixth. As we approach half-time, Isak though trying to feed the ball in. Oh, it's just wide from the edge of the area from Longstaff as it came back to him. Again, Tottenham got a deflection. Again, it's another Newcastle corner, this time off Davinson Sanchez. Good defending, but the prime, the word good, to very much that Tottenham are doing this afternoon is a stretch. At Newcastle, very professional, do what they do. Newcastle's not changed their game. We've seen them play a lot this season. They play exactly what they've done today. They've got the rewards. Tottenham for me, embarrassing. So Newcastle play the corner short to the edge of the area, swung in, headed away at the back by Romero for Tottenham. <laughs> Jacob Murphy has to shoot from the best part of 45 yards, not going to do that, but he will step past Son with ease and plays it straight into the heels of Son. Newcastle get it back through Botman and now Murphy out to the right-hand side where Fabian Shares taken up the right wing position. Kieran Trippier now just inside the Tottenham half. As Newcastle play it around once more. Here is Gimmerich. Again, they're going through the gears of purpose. Longstaff trying to get into the area. Good covering challenge by Davinson Sanchez and cleared away by Perisic. It's over the head of Sonia Min, but Newcastle just come once again. The black and white wave bearing down on Tottenham. They lead by five goals to nil, Newcastle, as we approach half time. Here is Gimmerich out to the left hand side. Willock picks it up. Longstaff's pointing to where he wants it. Infield instead to Joe Linton. Won't reach Isak. Clear away by Tottenham. Goal at Bournemouth. John Akers. It's another one for West Ham United. Dream half for David Moyes' team. Bournemouth nil. West Ham three. Another set piece. And Declan Rice striding onto the ball. First time. Half volley. Little deflection off Billing. And in. Bournemouth nil. West Ham three. So hugely damaging defeat coming the way of Bournemouth. Hugely damaging defeat coming the way of Tottenham. 
And in the first halves of both games still out to the right hand side go Newcastle Jacob Murphy leading by five goals to nil Newcastle Murphy's ball is across it's just over the head of Willock will be picked up on this left hand side by Sean Longstaff Kulisevsky gets a foot in and it's cleared away over the halfway line to the Super League Salford against Catalan Dave Woods 26 minutes played and it's now Salford 8 Catalan 4 the time is perfect Mark Sneedard kicked a penalty to make it 8-0 but Tom Johnson literally in those last seconds diving over at the corner to get a try so it's Salford 8 Catalan 4 with 14 minutes of the first half remaining Romero heads away again for Tottenham Newcastle pick it up on the right hand side with Trippier we've talked a lot about how shocking Tottenham have been how good have Newcastle been? Uh, and it, listen, you know what you get with Newcastle. I've been here quite a few times this season. And they're honest. They work hard. They move the ball. They get on the front foot. They, they want to put the shirt on and they want to play for Newcastle United. They want to get these fans right behind them. And they've done it this season. You've got a question Tottenham about that, by the way. Uh, Mentality-wise, uh, does some of them want to play for Tottenham? I mean, what a club to play for. They don't want to play. It, it's embarrassing. It, honestly, it's literally embarrassing. Two minutes of added time. We're into them now. Kieran Trippier ball into the area left by Willett. Cleared away by Kulisevsky and Son will sprint towards the halfway line. Kane looking to get up there with him. Son still going. Kane is there. Son ran into Fabian Cher who stood his ground well. Kulisevsky then colliding with Joe Linton. Nothing in that, says David Coote. And Kulisevsky will bring it down the right-hand side for Tottenham. Newcastle 5, Tottenham 0. At the end of this first half, Kulisevsky down edge of the box. David Coop waves it away. <laughs> so does Joe Linton, who gestures fervently to Kulisevsky to get back up well, to the speed. see what he's looking for. He's not going to get that. He hit the ground quite early, and the referee just sort of said, get up, didn't he? And Joe Linton patted him on the head. Um, worth a try, but no chance. So, I, I, you know what? You look at players at reputations, um, and a lot of them here will be under scrutiny. Very much so. A sorry, sorry afternoon for Tottenham. A fabulous afternoon for Newcastle United. And we have a minute still to play of this first half. They lead by five goals to nil here on Five Live. West Ham 3-0 up now against Bournemouth in the Premier League. Reminded commentary from Wembley coming up of the FA Cup semi-final between Brighton and Manchester United. We'll have to go some <laughs> to match the drama of this opening 45 here at St James's Park. Tottenham in possession, just inside their own half. Played forward, Son won't reach it. Here is Longstaff, just inside the Newcastle half. Trippier over the top. There's two runners there, almost two on one with Davinson Sanchez. It will fall to Jacob Murphy. Right-hand side of the penalty area, slides it to Gimaraish. He's challenged by Skip, eased out of the penalty area. Gimaraish wants more for Newcastle. Murphy wants it on the edge of the box. Murphy trying to work room for the shot, does work room for the shot and scoops it wide. And there is the half-time whistle and listen to the reaction at St James's Park. Jubilation and joy for the Newcastle fans. But you might be able to hear faintly over those cheers some boos from the Tottenham fans who've stayed. Their side have been eviscerated in this first half. At the break, it is Newcastle United 5, Tottenham Hotspur 0. Chris Waddle. Well, I've got to say, Newcastle do their jobs. They play that every week, uh, 100%. They wear the shirt with pride. You've got to question Tottenham about the pride bit and work rate and the honesty. I've, I've been so disappointed. And the Tottenham fans have made the journey, rightly so, Boo. These players, I tell you what, these players should reimburse them fans. Because that is literally one of the worst performances that I've ever seen. And it's, uh, uh, you're talking about a top five football club. It's literally embarrassing. It's been shocking, it's been shambolic from Spurs. It's been brilliant from Newcastle United. Half-time at St James's Park, Newcastle 5, Tottenham 0. An absolute shower has just started coming down at St James's Park as Newcastle United lead 5-0 against Tottenham. I mean, Chris, you were, you were frustrated about what was going on at Tottenham Hotspur before the game. And the words you've used repeatedly is embarrassing. And it is embarrassing. Listen, we're talking about one of the biggest clubs in the country. I know people might say oh, they don't win a lot, they haven't won a lot along to it. You look at their stadium, their train, their facilities, they, they, they buy players for it. They don't buy players cheap, they buy players for a lot of money. And if you look at this team today, they are just going through the motions from the first kickoff. They didn't have belief in the system. It doesn't matter what system you play, you've got to work. You've got to make, make it work. They just lie down from the minute. I've got to say, Romario. I mean, World Cup winner. He turned up today. I don't know what head he's got on. 
I don't know who thinks he is, but that was absolutely, I'm not just digging him out, you can dig the lot out for me. Reputations, internationals, they get praised for this, and the goals they score for that, and the way they play. Absolutely disgrace. And all them Tottenham fans have made a joke, I hope they reimburse him. But it's literally, Newcastle have been brilliant. Attitude, professionalism, that's what you want from your team. Now, if you get beat, you can put your hand up. That is not good enough. And I tell you what, I would get somebody until the end of the season, because I say they're lucky if they finish in the top 10. Just looking at some records. This is what you've got to do, Vicky, isn't it? When you get something like this, suddenly you get the record books out. So I'll tell you, Tottenham <laughs> exactly Hotspur's is. record league defeat is 7-0 in 1978. Their record Premier League defeat and their record FA Cup defeat, both at St. James's Park. Uh, 1996, 7-1, Shearer and Ferdinand scoring two each in that one. 6-1 here in the FA Cup. These numbers are more than possible. Absolutely, based on what we've seen so far. I mean, the only hope for Tottenham, I think, is more what Newcastle do. Does Eddie Howe decide to change it? Does he take off players at half-time? Does he rest them for this run-in, you know? Because now they are in pole position to secure it and close out Champions League football. But, you know, there are still games to go. So, so you could absolutely understand Eddie Howe doing that. And it is just indicative of how poor Tottenham have been, how clueless they look in this game, that you are more looking to what Newcastle do rather than what Tottenham will do in terms of Tottenham just surviving the second half as much as anything else. Remarkable scoreline. Newcastle United 5, Tottenham Hotspur 0 at half time. It would take Newcastle... I mean, we do as it stands a lot. Newcastle are going to win this game. They're going to go third in the Premier League table by the looks of it. Uh, and Spurs would be left six points outside the top four. And John Akers, you thought you had a dramatic first half. It's made this one look a bit tame, hasn't it, really? Bournemouth nil. West Ham United three, West Ham scoring three goals that Bournemouth players and staff will not want to see again. They've been very, very straightforward. The first one for Antonio, a header from a Cresswell corner. He's just risen near post, unmarked, and headed it in from six yards. The second, Paqueta, same at the far post, this time from open play. Cross from Sofal from the right-hand side, and he's at the far post, six yards out. A few yards out, just headed it down and in. And then a corner from the same side, left-hand side, swung in, gets a little flick. Rice is in all kinds of room. He runs onto a bouncing ball, smashes it in via a little deflection. And that was 3-0. In the middle of all that, Bournemouth had a good little spell. They put together some good football. They had some good balls whipped across the box. Solanke had a shot saved by Fabianski, but they're 3-0 down. Three poor goals conceded. West Ham look like they've got a little bit of confidence about them. Bournemouth nil, West Ham three. And if West Ham were to go on and get the points, it would move them six clear of the relegation zone. There's been a goal in the Women's Champions League semi-final. Wolfsburg against Arsenal. Maz Faruqi. Yeah, decent opening 20 minutes or so for Arsenal, but they trail. Great team move from Wolfsburg, finished by their top scorer of the season, Eva Pyer, her 23rd of the season. She fired into the bottom left-hand corner from the right as she ran into the area. Wolfsburg won, Arsenal nil. Uh, in the Women's Super League, Manchester City, you were fourth in the league, play West Ham at 6.45. None of the top four playing as it stands, though. Here are the scores. Liverpool nil, Brighton won. Uh, Reading 2, Everton won. Tottenham Hotspur won. Aston Villa 2. If Spurs do lose that game, they'll only be two points above Leicester, who will have played a game less. And Leicester are bottom in the only relegation place at the moment in the WSL. Quite a lot to talk about. And we've still got to go to Wembley Stadium as well for our first look ahead to the FA Cup semi final which we're bringing you in full at half for Brighton against Manchester United we'll take a breath here's the news on five life it's a huge game for it. listen on BBC sounds this is BBC radio five live with the five live news good afternoon I'm Dan Brennan Rishi Sunak's confirmed that all British diplomats and their families have been evacuated from Sudan in a complex and rapid operation the Prime Minister says work is continuing to help British nationals who remain trapped in the country rival military factions have been fighting for over a week as two generals compete for control of the country more than 400 civilians are thought to have been killed here's our Africa correspondent Mercy Juma the injured are still stuck people cannot access uh, um you know, medical aid, and even those who are waiting to be evacuated are running low on supplies. People are talking about not having food, they don't have water, and some have decided to take the dangerous route and go by road out of Khartoum. 
The Labour Party has removed the whip from Diane Abbott pending an investigation into a letter she wrote in today's Observer newspaper. In it, she suggested that Jewish people and travellers suffered prejudice rather than racism. Miss Abbott added that many types of white people, including those with red hair, experience prejudice but not the lifelong racial discrimination seen in pre-civil rights America. She since apologised, saying it's completely undeniable that Jewish people had suffered the effects of racism. People are being reminded not to respond to an emergency alert on their phones at 3 o'clock this afternoon. A new system is being tested, which could be used in the future to warn people about life-threatening events. And Twitter has begun reinstating blue ticks of accounts with over a million followers, even if they haven't paid for a subscription to its premium service. Beyonce, Cristiano Ronaldo and Victoria Beckham are among the public figures to have had the feature restored. OK, let's do this. On BBC iPlayer, you'll find what you love. You know what they say, Pip. Love is blind. And love what you find. It's like an arrest people for talking like that. Binge watch brilliant shows. That's my weekend taken care of. From the latest. If my life was a movie, it'd be a classic. <laughs> to the greatest. Welcome to a place that is astonishing. And live stream BBC TV. A dramatic day in a fascinating season. The best way to watch TV. BBC iPlayer. <laughs> More live Premier League football than anyone else. Five Lives Premier League Sunday with Steve Crossman. Well, welcome back. Newcastle 5, Tottenham nil. Half-time at St James's Park. Second half commentary on the way on 5 Sports Extra. Another very one-sided game. Bournemouth nil. West Ham 3 is a half-time score. We'll be keeping you up to date with the only game in Rugby Union's Premiership this afternoon. That's the leader Saracens at home to London Irish. It starts in five minutes' time and Adam Whitty is watching. Yeah, this is a pivotal game for the playoff race because everything could be decided based on this game today. A Saracens win or two points would confirm top spot and top seeding for the semi-finals and would knock London Irish out of the race for the playoffs a win or three points for the exiles and we go to the final day supporters of top four rivals Northampton and Leicester would have done a little jig I think when they saw the Saracens team for this all the international heavies back Farrell, Malin to the Toje, three of ten changes from last week's defeat at Saints. Irish, who need to win both of their games really to sneak into the top four, make one change with Scotland scrum half Ben White back in the lineup. We're a kickoff, Steve, delayed by 40 seconds here. Officially delayed by 40 seconds. Can you guess why? Uh, London Marathon? I don't know. <laughs> It, it's the alert system oh, so right, they are right. worried that everybody will be looking at their phones getting into their bags having a whiz around and won't be paying attention to the game so kick off at three o'clock and 40 seconds fair enough thank you very much uh, so Adam will keep us up to date with that uh, women's six nations France take on Wales that starts at three as well Mark Selby continues his second round match at the world snooker championships in Sheffield Jamie Broughton is watching champion is taking on Gary Wilson the Leicester star resumed leading by five frames to three both players had chances in the opening frame this afternoon but Wilson has just taken it with a break of 84 to reduce the arrears to 5-4 meanwhile on the other table Jack Lazowski is playing Anthony McGill Lazowski was 7-1 down at the start of play and it could be 8-1 because McGill is back at the table he's on a break of 31 13 is the target for a place in the quarterfinals uh, elsewhere, Kenya's Kelvin Kipton won the men's London Marathon in a course record time of two hours, one minute and 25 seconds. Sifan Hassan overcame a hip injury to win the women's race in what was her first marathon. Uh, Mo Farah was ninth in his final London Marathon. The 40-year-old said afterwards the great North run in September will be the final race of his career. It's the final day of the latest round of county championship matches. You can follow ball-by-ball -ball coverage on the BBC website and app. In the Women's Champions League semi-final first leg, there's been another goal. Wolfsburg Arsenal, Maz Faruqi. Second for Wolfsburg, Steve. What a mistake as well from Arsenal at the back as they tried to play out. We mentioned already a loose ball pounced on by Jonsdottir six yards out. That is not a play that Arsenal want to watch. Again, Wolfsburg 2, Arsenal 0. Uh, let's check in for the first time at Wembley Stadium then. Commentary at half past four of the second FA Cup semi-final. It's Manchester United and Brighton correspondent John Murray is there. Good afternoon, John. H Hello, Steve. Yeah. Uh, Brighton had their big day out in 2019, but the feeling is very much that they are ready for this. Very much. And what is remarkable, and I know that they are favourites, they're considered to be favourites for this in the, in the odds, but honestly, it feels like every single person I've spoken to here, whichever side of the, this particular divide you're on, thinks that Brighton are going to win this. You know, there, there seem to be very, very few who are backing Manchester United, which is a remarkable thing, isn't it? But there's a former Brighton and a former Manchester United player standing with John, Matt Upson and Peter Schmeichel. Uh, Peter, let's, let's come to you first then. Brighton favourites? <laughs> 
and um, they're playing really well, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> They, I, no, I don't think there's a favourite in this game. I don't. I mean, you could, you can, of course, you can say that Man City were clear favourites yesterday uh, against uh, Sheffield United, but Brighton playing exceptionally well and have been doing that since the World Cup, really. Um, and for Manchester United, it's been a little bit up and down. But um, for all the setbacks that Manchester United they've had this season, they've they've bounced back very very quickly and uh, kind of you know. A bizarre way the worst it looks for Manchester United they've really really dug deep and, and have come up with an answer so I think I think it's very even um, I don't think that's a favorite in this game in fairness Peter was the one I hadn't asked beforehand whether he thinks uh, Brighton were the favorite <laughs> <laughs> I, I could never go there you know, I just could I can't get myself to do that I, I mean I appreciate how good Brighton are I, I mean the work that Zebri has done since he, he's come in um, you know he he's he's changed a little bit he's you know just i um, you know just see is not going to play today but he changed the goalkeeper for instance which is you know a goalkeeper who's been there quite a, a long time he's not it's not like a 19 year old he's putting in he's just changing it because he fits the way that we play our game much better and these are brave decisions that that um normally when you come in you you take your time you, you sort of start to adjust slowly but they've done really really well and uh you know they, they fully deserve to be here today and, and of course we don't have to talk the Premier League today but they are they're, they're making a big push there as well. I, I just want to say for, for anyone you might have heard it in the background you might have just heard it from your device as well we have just had the um, the government test going off on many people's mobile phones and, and smart devices so that that is all it is there is no need to worry there'll be lots of people listening who maybe weren't aware of that um, as a news story but you can just dismiss it as I'm sure many people will have done and uh, you'll be back with us now hopefully on BBC Sounds. Um, Matt Upson, what do you think? Brighton, all the way for me, Steve, to be honest. I, I just think they're... Yeah, there we are. They're, I'm, I'm the one, I'm that one person that John spoke to who thought Brighton. Um, I just think they're, they're a brilliant team at the moment. If you're going to go on current form, um, they're consistent with the way they play. The one thing about this game for me that, that could tip it in Manchester United's balance is just almost like the history and the feel and the the scale of what manchester united are in this competition and, and at wembley stadium already having won a trophy here this season this season and and i think that if brighton can believe and, and park that to one side and just put that into into play and play their game and play as well as what they have been doing in the Premier League, I think they'll win the game. Um, but wow. that, for me, Steve, is the big challenge for, for Brighton today. Yeah, that, that was a very much a, a full house of opinions in the uh, panel that we had on earlier today with uh, with Nader Manua, Ben Mee and, and Karen Bardsley as well. It's all set up perfectly. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, we'll be back at Wembley Stadium for full commentary at half past four. We'll get the build-up going at four o'clock. We're going to go back just a few seconds early for the second half at St James's Park because there's so much to talk about. Newcastle 5, Spurs nil. A change in goal, Vicky Sparks, for Tottenham. Yes, a change in goal for Fraser Forster. Tottenham players are out. They're ready to start this second half. So Hugo Lloris off. Fraser Forster on. Chris Waddle alongside me. Now, we didn't see any issue with Lloris in terms of injury. He has struggled a bit with injury this season, but we didn't see any. In terms of the goals, there was nothing really that he could have done about them. It was more about the defensive unit, as in no clear errors for them. So, interesting from Christian Stellini, whether he has picked up a bit of a problem or we don't know, we can't speculate. Well, uh, you would think he's got a, an injury tape problem because, uh, as you say, he, and he couldn't stop the goals, could he? Say one of them and the top of the rebound in. Um, Fraser Foster has been playing very well. He should never have lost his shirt, by the way. When Lloris got bit, he was playing very well, Foster. So, I, I, I don't think about that. I, I think that's, I think there's been an injury involved there. Um, but. There's a lot of things he could change. Well, having been warming up, Fraser Forster now has to come across to the halfway line and officially be substituted on. Former Newcastle Academy player, of course, began his career in the North East but never made his senior debut for them. So, gets a ripple of applause around St James's Park as well from the Newcastle fans. And just looking away to our left, no surprise that I would say around half of those Tottenham fans now have not returned for the second half. 5-0 as Newcastle get us underway. And Chris Waddle, you can't blame them. I think they've done well for half of them to stay. Um, 
Oh, they're on the froth already, Newcastle. Newcastle coming forward again. Jacob Murphy, right hand side of the penalty area. Murphy on a hat trick, plays the ball across and Forster claims easily at his near post. Yeah, good start by Newcastle. You know, it, this is all about now is uh, the, the honesty, the the character of Tottenham. Now it's. Uh, the one thing you say second half is, uh, and it's cliches in football, but we know, but it'll be like we don't get beat the second half. And that's for something for this Tottenham side to do because, you know, they've got so many international footballers who have basically gone through the motions today. And it's, uh, I can see why all the fans have left. Bruno Gimaraes picks it up for Newcastle. No changes for them. We'll run you through the lineups in a moment. Gimaraes inside the centre circle, plays it out to the left hand side. and. Joe Linton has Burn on the overlap. Burn now collects, pressured by Pedro Porro. Dan Burn down by the corner flag, looking to work room for the cross. Does get the delivery into the area. Tottenham really don't respond at all. Longstaff's in there, trying to follow up after the initial effort was just about flicked away by Perisic. And in the end, Tottenham clear up towards halfway. What are they doing there, Chris oh, Waddle? bounces. To, uh, to be fair, I can see Perisic looking at Forster to say, come and get it. He didn't. And it was nearly another goal. Newcastle come down the right-hand side. No signs of letting up so far. Gimaraes is ball in and on the stretch. Alexander Isak can't control the header and it's behind for a Tottenham goal kick. Well, whether they're low on confidence or not, Newcastle have been excellent. Their attitude's first class and this is what you want. When you put a shirt on, give 100%. Nobody's going to question you. They're not questioning your lack of ability or, you know, what you did with the ball. Not good enough at times, but they can't fault you at your work rate. Newcastle are a team, proper team, they work ever so hard for each other, you can see why they've had a lot of great results um, and today they've thoroughly deserved it Tottenham have been absolutely terrible Harry Kane won't control that ball over the top and it goes out of play for a Newcastle throw, so Newcastle who lead by five goals to nil all goals incidentally scored inside the opening 21 minutes of this match, they blew Tottenham away quite remarkably in a fashion that I've never seen before in terms of the start to a game between two sides that are both going for the Champions League. Surely not after this afternoon for Tottenham. Surely very much so after this afternoon for Newcastle. So Tottenham with the throw on the far side, midway through their own half. Let's head for an update from the Super League. Salford Catalan, Dave Wood. It's half time, Salford 14, Catalan 4. Sensational Salford try right on the stroke of half time. Joe Burgess both through 20 yards out, sprinted 80 yards. Tom Johnson, the winger, Catalan just got to him, but Burgess slid over, Sneeds out of the goal. So half time, Salford 14, Catalan 4. And let's head to Bournemouth against West Ham, John Aiken. As Bournemouth just with a chance, they've started the second half quickly and they need to. It's Bournemouth nil, West Ham three. Kiefer Moore is on as a substitute for Bournemouth. He's just headed wide. Bournemouth nil, West Ham three. Thanks, John. Commentary over on five sports extra of that match. As Romero has it just outside the penalty area for Tottenham. So Newcastle playing in the traditional home kit, the black and white shirts, the black shorts and the black socks with Pope in goal, who might have a little bit to do here because Harry Kane is bearing down on the penalty area, still going, Kane keeps his footing into the penalty area, goal back for Tottenham, it is celebrated almost ironically by the away fans, up to our left, Harry Kane doing what he does so often at St James's Park, he's got a great record here, a little low five between him and Son, but no other celebrations, of course, as you would expect, apart from that, it's Newcastle 5, Tottenham yeah, 1. Yeah, it's good football by Tottenham, playing out the back there, lovely giving goals, and Kane gets one on one. Shea, Shea for me, shouldn't have dived in, he should have just backpedaled and waited for help. He didn't, he tried to win the ball off Kane. Kane goes past him on the left hand side and hits it across the goal, he's left foot. It's a great finish. We know what Harry Kane can do, given the opportunity. Well, uh, well I'm waiting for the Tottenham fans to sing, we're going to win 6 5 now, but, um, you know, what can they do? And uh, Newcastle scored 5 in the first 20, but I can't see Tottenham doing that. Here is Jacob Murphy, intercepts on the halfway line, closed down by Kulisevsky. You can hear the frustration around St James's Park because Tottenham have picked it up again, out to the left-hand side. Not concern, I would say, not with this Leeds, but they don't want to see their side become sloppy. They want them to maintain the high standards that they had in the first half. It happens, Vicky. It's, you know, when you get so far in the lead, you relax a little bit and maybe get, you know, you heard the all A's uh, in the first half, so they don't want to get complacent. You want to see the job through. Well, to not see it through from being 5 dead up inside 21 minutes would be an even bigger story than the one we've had so far as the ball is over the top for Nick Pope. So let's take you through that Newcastle lineup. Pope in goal, back four of Trippier, 
Cher, Botman and Byrne. Ahead of them, it's Willock, Gimaraes and Longstaff. And the front three, who have all got on the score sheet today, Murphy with two, Isak with two, and Joe Linton with one, as the ball is all the way back with Fraser Forster, who's now in goal for Tottenham. They started with a back four, they switched to the back three, bringing Sanchez on, Romero, Dyer and Sanchez in that, as Son brings it forward out to the left-hand side. Perisic will drive for goal, it's just over the bar, Pope had it covered. So Perisic now playing in his more familiar position of left wing-back, having started at left-back, which did not work for Tottenham and that's an understatement Poro at right wing back We've got Hoybier and Skip in the centre with Son Kulisevsky and Kane who has got that goal back early on in the second half for Tottenham up front I've got to say Newcastle started very sloppy the second half they, 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 you know we, we know how they play they press they work hard for each other at the minute they've come out as I say that, that result is a you can get complacent and uh, I think Newcastle have just come off the pace a lot Tottenham scored and Tottenham now look the team uh, full of confidence which is remarkable, <laughs> given the, the game they've had so far. But they are playing better, and the switch to the three has, has so clearly helped as Romero plays it forward. I have to say, didn't help initially. Newcastle still scored two goals after they made that switch, but they've just settled a little bit more into their rhythm on what has been a woeful afternoon for Spurs and a brilliant afternoon for Newcastle. And they're pushing forward now, looking for the six long stuff into the area, drives the shot across goal. And Isak was making the run and can't make the contact almost on the goal line. Tottenham got a touch. It's behind for a Newcastle corner. Oh, he was so close to his hat trick there, Alexander Isak. A fraction away from connecting with a header. Yeah, just a slight deflection takes it away. And Newcastle get the corner. Trippi has jogging over to take it. That was more like Newcastle the first half. So seven minutes gone in this second half. Newcastle United five. Tottenham Hotspur one. Trippier with this corner from the far side at St James's Park. Forster raising his arms in the air on his goal line and the header is down and blocked on the goal line. Newcastle keeping it alive. Share with the effort cleared off the line by Harry Kane Absolutely. as the flag is up on this near side and Tottenham will have a free kick but again Tottenham rocking. They've taken it quickly. Harry Kane looking for the run of Son. Well read by Jacob Murphy who always stays back from those set pieces and that's why he did his job well out for a Tottenham throw. Nicky, you're looking at that corner there, the size of Tottenham players, it's not like they've got small players, they're all, it's a free header from six yards out, do your job. Indeed, and really, to Tottenham's performance, there's not much more to say, Harry Kane comes forward, trying to galvanise them, almost finds Son, well read by Trippier, and that's it, Tottenham just have to think of this, don't they, as you said Chris Waddle, it's all about focusing on this second half as a completely fresh 45 they've got the early goal they trail by five goals to one as Perisic under pressure loses out to Alexander Isak who's roundly cheered the Newcastle record signing for coming back to help out there defensively Willock though is dispossessed by Romero touched by Forster inside his area very calmly done plays it out to Dyer on the left hand side here is Poibier plays it in field now to Oliver Skip being pursued by Willock and Skip's still going Willick, careful not to bring him down, but Tottenham retain possession. Kulisevsky out to the right-hand side. Poro drives into the area, took a deflection. Will be a Tottenham corner. Where was this? Where was well, the shadow of this uh, from Tottenham in the first half? Well, you've well, you got to say the shape didn't suit them to start off. The back four didn't work. Um, well, we all said it was going to be a risk, and uh, it was. It, uh, it cost them. Now they've gone back to how they play, but they're actually playing with a bit more energy. Listen, they've had words at half-time, and rightly so. You know... All asking for is effort. So corner to Tottenham to be taken from this near side. Newcastle 5, Tottenham 1, West Ham 3 0 up at Bournemouth still in the Premier League's other 2 o'clock kickoff. Tottenham corner swung into that crowded six yard box. Newcastle just about make contact, clear it out of the penalty area. Son Hyun Min will pick it up for Spurs and send it back to Oliver Skip. In the WSL, it's now Reading 2, Everton 1. Spurs have equalised against Villa and Brighton lead Liverpool by a goal to nil. Wolfsburg currently beating Arsenal 2-0 in Germany in the first leg of their Women's Champions League semi-final. Out to the left-hand side goes Nick Pope for Newcastle. In field to Bruno Guimaraes. Now forward to Jacob Murphy. Alexander Isak is an option ahead of him centrally but goes right instead to Kieran Trippier. He will pull it back to Bruno Guimaraes. Square now to Dan Byrne as 
Newcastle knocked the ball around very calmly. You have to say after this performance, Chris, and looking at their running, you know, Arsenal at home is, is a tough one. Of course, when you play sides scrapping at the bottom of the table, it's tough in different ways. As Alexander Isak almost into the penalty area, caught Romero there as Romero came across and made the challenge, and it's a free kick to Tottenham. But, you know, Everton away, Southampton at home challenging in terms of the fact that they've both got so much to play for. Leeds away as well, and then Brighton at home, Leicester at home. But, but that's a run, and you look at this, you look at the performance, you look at the fact that Newcastle are moving six points clear of Tottenham, still with the game in hand. They've got to make the Champions League. Now, well, surely. you would think so. But all them teams you've read, uh, uh, yes, you wouldn't say they've had great seasons, but they're fighting for the lives. And we've seen over the years teams who scrap and doesn't matter how they get a result, uh, they need results to stay in the Premier League. And that's what it's all about. So they're no gimme. Sometimes, you know, yes, you like to play middle of the team, middle of the table team who's got nothing to play for. But uh, just reading them fixtures off there, Everyone's got something to play for. That's it. It's the story for the vast majority of the Premier League clubs, isn't it? Even a side like Brighton, you know, pushing. See how high they can finish up in the table. Can they sneak into Europe? The Sean Long stuff goes down. Challenged by Perisic. And that will be a free kick to Newcastle, who are playing from left to right in this second half. Midway through the Tottenham half on the right-hand side. Yeah, it's a silly free kick again. Perisic, they are getting in trouble with the ball. Should have cleared it. Um, I've got to say, Tottenham's improved second half, which is not hard. I mean, the way they played first half. Um, Newcastle have just sort of been careful. You know, they're, they're controlling the game now and they're not taking any risks. They're not on the front foot as much as they were. To them, it was game over half-time. 12 minutes gone in the second half. Newcastle 5, Tottenham 1. All of Newcastle's goals coming in the opening 21 minutes of this match. Kieran Trippier just changing from a distance a few words with Eddie Howe in terms of the strategy for this free kick wide right position for Newcastle swings it high into the penalty area whistles already gone foul on Dyer by Longstaff and it will be a free kick to Tottenham just inside their own area that wasn't the best delivery anywhere from uh, Trippier was it quick free quick free kick by Forster but Newcastle deal with it well Byrne doesn't yeah, miscue from Burn after the initial contact was made by Jacob Murphy and Tottenham forced back into their own penalty area. As Steve Crossman mentioned at half time, it is one of those score lines that you do start looking up the record books. And we have done for Tottenham their record defeat in all competitions 8 0 in the Intertoto Cup against Colm as Forster takes a little chance against Joe Willock. They do clear it away. Davinson Sanchez into Joe Linton goes out for a Tottenham goal kick and Joe Linton waving the crowds again to raise the volume inside St James's Park record Premier League defeat incidentally for Tottenham as we mentioned at half time in Five Lives Court 7-1 to Newcastle that could still happen Newcastle leading by five goals to one but records are one thing but it's the immediate damage and what it speaks to of the long term malaise that Tottenham have found themselves meandering into Hugely concerning, hugely damaging, hugely positive for Newcastle United. Eric Dyer out to the right-hand side for Tottenham. Here they go down the right with Pedro Porro. He was blocked off there. David Coote is happy with it. Newcastle play the ball into their own penalty area and eventually do calmly clear the ball away. Blocked by Porro. Will go out of play for a Newcastle goal kick. Chris Waddle. Well, let's just say Tottenham uh, slightly improved second half, but uh, still not enough for me. Mails off it. The thing with Newcastle is, Vicky, they, they know what they've got ahead of them and they're in the driving seat. They know we win, we win, we're, we're in the Champions League. Tottenham now are just hoping other teams do them favours and they can put a string of results together, which, let's be honest, look, in the last two, three weeks, you can't see Tottenham winning many more games. So, goal kick to Newcastle, who lead by five goals to one. Let's head for an update from the Women's Champions League semi-final first leg. Wolfsburg against Arsenal, Mas Faruqi. A goal back for Arsenal just before half time. Rafael, a header at the far post from a corner. She outmuscled Oberdorf. They are back in it, Arsenal. Wolfsburg 2, Arsenal 1 at the break. Thank you, Maz. Reminder West Ham still leading Bournemouth by three goals to nil into the second half there in the Premier League. You can listen to commentary of that match over on Five Sports Extra. Newcastle with the throw, midway inside the Tottenham half. Sure. Newcastle fans listening to us will want to relive this in any way possible. And one way of doing that is downloading the Football Daily from BBC Sounds. We'll have all the reaction to this match and the FA Cup semi-final as well later between Brighton and Manchester United. And while you're on BBC Sounds, do check out our back catalogue of podcasts as well. 
It's one on the sports desk at the moment, looking at the wider investment from Saudi Arabia in sports, covers not only Newcastle, of course, but Live Golf. Ronaldo's move to the country. You can check that out. Search for the sports desk on BBC Sounds. In field, go Newcastle to... Looking for the run of Willett, but it will be Huibier who picks it up and moves it out to the right-hand side. Newcastle 5, Tottenham 1. Here is Kulisevsky. They look to get another goal back in this second half, but there's nothing really to say for this from Tottenham other than perhaps goal difference. As Son drives, blocked away by Botman, will spin out to the right-hand side. And again, you just hear the ripple of frustration around St James's Park. But Newcastle not on top in this second half, very much on top in terms of the score line. 5-1. They lead Tottenham as Davinson Sanchez comes down the right-hand side, close down by Bruno Guimaraes. And it bounces off Guimaraes, he's the latest to wave his hands to the St James's Park crowd. And it is a goal kick to Newcastle United. 1-1 one, one now in the Women's Super League between Liverpool and Brighton. And, and just on Davinson Sanchez there, he was bombing down that right wing. I mean, I mean we, we talked about the formation and, and the fact that Tottenham had the ability to, to put three centre-halves on the pitch and eventually they did so. Do you think if Sanchez hadn't had that reaction from Tottenham fans last weekend, he, he might have started him? And, and if so, should a manager be swayed by that? No, he shouldn't be swayed. He should believe in what... Uh, listen, you're a professional footballer. You've played good level. You're an international footballer. Uh, that shouldn't bother you. Listen, times in your career, you do get uh, fans who sometimes uh, don't think you're doing enough or playing well enough, so they will dig you out. And that's, that's part of football. He should have been brave enough and said, look, I'm ready to play if you want me to play. Um, whether he's trying to protect them or not, it's, I'm not saying it's cost them the result, but it's definitely, as I said from the start, but when I looked at Tottenham's lineup today, I could not believe he was playing a back four with them players. And it, it's cost them. And, you know, this level of football, you just can't believe what, what, you know, you think, what, you go to St. James's Park, it's going to be very difficult, and you're playing a back four with basically two wing backs or two wingers. It doesn't work. Stoppage in play here because Joe Linton was receiving some treatment. He is up to his feet and walking down that left-hand touchline. Just watching for any movement on the Newcastle bench, but none be so some. far. I think there will be. I think they're warming up three or four of them. Um, listen, they've come off the pace, Newcastle. They know the game's won. Tottenham have uh, had a bit more time and space, so Tottenham have looked a lot better second half the way they passed the ball around. But that's because Newcastle are not pressing them as much as they did in the first half. So... Um, it's it's hard to, to read into, but I'm sure Eddie Howe will be thinking, next 10 minutes, let's get three on. Ball is cleared long by Nick Pope, intercepted by Tottenham. And he is Romero, will square it to Eric Dyer. Out to the left-hand side and Ivan Perisic. Son will chase this. Fabian Scher is there, but Son has the beating of him initially for pace. Scher trying to block off the angle. Son into the penalty area, still going Son. Still going Son, well blocked away by Botman on the edge of the six-yard box. And then the shot is flashed wide. Difficult angle on the volley by Pedro Porro. That would have been a special goal. But I'm not sure how many smiles well, it would have raised for Tottenham. They still trail by five goals to one. Well, we know Newcastle like to play high and, and condense the pitch when they haven't got the ball. And Son definitely had the legs on share there, didn't he? And we saw that last week with Ollie Watkins. He caused them so many problems running down the sides of them. Um, Tottenham have definitely improved. But I've got to say, Newcastle have come so... <laughs> Really off the pace. Getting sloppy now, Newcastle. Yeah, they've given the ball away with Joe Linton. Hoybier plays it forward. Kane, edge of the area. Out to the right-hand side. Porres there again. Tries it across. Left by Kulisevsky. Almost came to Son on the edge of the six-yard box. Cleared away by Newcastle for a Tottenham throw. Deep in Newcastle territory. Newcastle still lead by five goals to one. Better news for Tottenham's women this afternoon. They are now 3-2 up against Aston Villa, having come from behind in the Women's Super League. And we will just watch this Tottenham throw because Porro is shaping up to take this long into the penalty area as Tottenham look to get another goal back on what has been a humbling afternoon. Long it goes towards Davinson Sanchez, headed away by Joe Linton. So to Bournemouth, John Akers. It's Bournemouth nil, West Ham United three, 65 minutes gone. West Ham have just had two efforts on goal. Ben Ramery shot twice straight at Neto and at the other end, We've had an effort from Kiefer Moore straight at Fabianski. All the subs are on. Last roll of the dice for Gary O'Neill. Anthony Watara and Vigna have just come on. It's Bournemouth nil, West Ham 3. So let's head to the Super League. Salford against Catalan. Steve Wood. 48 minutes played. Salford 16 at Catalan 4. Mark Sneed just pushing them a little further ahead with his fourth successful kick of the day. A penalty in the 45th minute. So Salford leading here 16 points to 4 against Catalan. 
Thanks, Dave. He is. The changes that Chris Waddle was predicting. Two of them, and I don't think Tottenham will be too pleased to see these particular players coming on because they're in very good form. Callum Wilson's on, no hat trick for Alexander. Isak, he's coming on. And no hat trick for Jacob Murphy either. He's off too. And their top scorer, Miguel Almiron, is on. Yeah, well, Almiron back from injury. Wilson, we know now, is coming on a lot now for he's out that's the they seem to balance out he's out to be disappointed and so will Murphy though probably thought I can get a hat-trick here today and um, it's not to be but look for Newcastle this might liven them up on the tempo because you've got to say for all the five one up the game's over in my eyes um, they've not been uh, they've not been at it he can say second half Newcastle no very fair to say that but all the good work was done in the opening 21 minutes where they stuck five past a shell-shocked, shambolic Tottenham. Harry Kane has got a goal back for Tottenham in this second half. Samson Sanchez coming forward again. Nick Pope gets there. He's really getting forward, isn't he, Sanchez? Listen, I, it's, I, I'm going to say yeah, Tottenham's look all right second half, but that's because Newcastle have come off the pace. And here they come with Callum yeah. Wilson, challenged by Eric Dyer. Free kick given just inside the Tottenham half. Newcastle right. 5, Tottenham 1. And Chris I was also going to say Tottenham couldn't play any worse. Very fair point. Miguel Amaron cutting in field from the right hand side. Forward to Gimaraes. And now Longstaff lays it off to Trippier. The black and white shirts are queuing up in the centre. Amaron's on the edge of the area. Trippier does find him. Little deflection and steered into the bottom corner. What an immediate impact from the substitute Callum Wilson and Newcastle United have six against Tottenham. They continue to run riot against Spurs and surely they're heading for the Champions League this season. Newcastle six, Tottenham one. Another easy goal for Callum Wilson. I mean, they don't deal with the ball. They never put pressure on it. Newcastle United end up in the penalty area of Tottenham and it's it's so simple. It's like they're walking the ball in at times, Newcastle. There's no pressure on them. They just walk the ball. Nobody gets close to block the cross, block the pass. They just do what they want. It comes out to them. It's a simple finish for Callum Wilson. He's done that. How many times have you done that in his career? But it's so poor by Tottenham again. 11 goals for the season for Callum Wilson. And a big roar around St James's Park as well. So popular here. There's no Neddy Howe for such a long time, of course, after their spell together at Bournemouth. And every time he's fit, yes, he struggled to dislodge Isak in the starting lineup with good reason, but when he stays fit, Callum Wilson, he provides such dynamism and attack for Newcastle, who lead by six goals to one in this second half. Gimaraes is brought down on the halfway line. Advantage is played. Now 2-2 between Reading and Everton in the WSL. And Kieran Trippier has it on the right-hand side for Newcastle. Forward to Almiron as Anthony Gordon prepares to come on for Newcastle. Bruno Gimaraes just outside the centre circle, out to the left-hand side from Almiron. And now Dan Byrne. Mankio will be coming on as well for the home side. Another double change. Joe Willock has it down the left, interception by Porro, out for a Newcastle throw to the Super League, Dave Woods. Uh, it is now Salford 16, Catalan 10, it's going to be a bit tasty here, there's about a 10-man brawl going on at the moment, but Catalan getting a try back, Paul Segway a moment ago, underneath the kick, touching it down, Kieran uh, has kicked the goal, so it's Salford 16, Catalan 10, 28 minutes to play. Thanks Dave, so here is this double change for Newcastle, and it's about resting players now, isn't it Chris? Trippier and Gibberish are off, Gordon and a rare appearance for Javi Mankio are on. Yeah, it is. Uh, he can afford to do it. He's got you know, a lot of games coming up. And uh, they're in the driving seat. Listen, there's no way Tottenham's going to score uh, six goals. So, yes, you know, they've got straight niggles, save their energy, go on the next game. Big smiles from Kieran Trippier and a hug for Javi Mankio as well. An embrace with Eddie Howe. A job very, very well done by Kieran Trippier and the whole of Newcastle United. And they have the ball inside the penalty area once more. Played back to the edge of the box. The shot is driven in by Joe Linton, blocked and cleared away by Pedro Porro. Harry Kane is closing down Cher, who wins the header. Flip forward by Joe Linton once more. Dyer is there for Tottenham. 
Miguel Amaron will pick it up. Lovely control by the Paraguayan and plays it out to the right-hand side. Here is Manquillo. Infield to Joe Linton. Fouled, was he, by Harry Kane? David Coote says no. Son then runs straight into Manquillo and Cher will clear it away. Oh, I'm strength. Chester down by Poro and this is not good for Newcastle. Cher's gone down. He stayed down on the halfway line and... Joe Linton is putting the ball immediately out of play and you called it straight away, Chris Waddle. This doesn't look good for Fabian Scher. No, it looks hamstring. He's gone into the challenge there. He's getting up now. I don't know if it's cramped, but uh, to me it looks like he's uh, pulled his hamstring. And that gives... Goal at Bournemouth, John Akers. And it's another one for West Ham. They've scored four, two games in a row. Bournemouth nil, West Ham four. It's the most bizarre goal. It's a cross from the right-hand side, dinked in from Bowen. It's like a scorpion kick. Four Nals has jumped in the air and kind of double back heeled it, but it's just dribbled into the net. Might have hit his backside on the way through. I've not seen a replay. One worth watching later. West Ham 4-0 up now with 19 minutes left. Thanks, John. Commentary continues on Fire Sports Extra. Tottenham have made a change. Dayan Kulosevsky is off. On out Danjuma is on. And let's head to the Gallagher Premiership. Saracens against London Irish. Adam Whitty. Playoff chasing Irish. They lead 10-3 against league leader Saracens with 27 minutes gone. Matt Rogerson storming over to extend the Exiles lead after a Paddy Jackson penalty. Their open style destroying Sarri so far. 28 minutes gone. Saracens nil. London Irish 10. Thanks very much, Adam. So... Pretty remarkable afternoon for West Ham as well. 4-0 they lead at Bournemouth. A reminder in the Women's Champions League semi-final, Wolfsburg 2, Arsenal 1 is the latest score. And Fabian Scher is walking very gingerly over well, to the touchline. Well, they do have one more change that they can make, Newcastle, and they're going to make it. Jamal Sells is coming on. Yeah, he's been here a few years now. He, he's getting fit into that position. Lacks a little bit of pace compared, maybe Scher, but... Uh, you don't like to see players, especially at this time of season when Newcastle get injuries. Yeah, the only downside really, other than if you're being incredibly harsh, not keeping the clean sheet as well. Well, Shares on the touchline now in conversation with Eddie Howe. They haven't made the change yet. Jamal Sells is stretching off. He's ready to, oh, Shares come back on. So Jamal Sells, having just completed his final few stretches, has to go and sit back down and put the bib back on, but he's there as an option if Cher can't continue but good from a Newcastle perspective to see that it wasn't the immediate hamstring concern or, or it going at least for Fabian Cher he's continuing for now so Joe Linton in possession play back into the Newcastle half and out to the left hand side now will be picked up by Anthony Gordon he's held up well by Tottenham and Newcastle back in their own half so let's head to Wembley for the team news the FA Cup semi-final Brighton against Manchester United John Murray well Brighton are without Ferguson so Welbeck plays against his old club the exciting 19 year old Enciso starts with Veltman only fit enough for the bench and Gross moving to right back and Manchester United have Rashford and Martial both fit as they make three changes from Thursday. Shaw will play at central defence with Maguire suspended. Fernandez returns from his European ban and Sancho and Sabitzer are among the substitutes today. Thanks, John. Full commentary coming up from 4.30. And let's head back to Bournemouth. John Aker. Bournemouth have hit the post. Solanke trying to do something similar to what Four Nails has just done for West Ham at the other end. He's in midair, about six or seven yards out. Comes off his shin, hits the base of the post. It's been that kind of day for Bournemouth. The goal, watching it back, one-footed, scorpion kick. No idea how Four Nails has scored it. Bournemouth nil, West Ham four. Thanks, John. So Fabian Scher only lasted a few more seconds. Jamal Lascelles is on for Scher. And Romero has gone into the book for a challenge for Tottenham, who trail by six goals to one. It is one of those games, Chris, where you have to just occasionally look up at the scoreline. I know, I know. I mean, the second half... <laughs> Make sure you haven't missed The second half's been very flat, hasn't it? it um, compared to that opening 20 minutes of the first half where Newcastle just blew Tottenham away. Um... Newcastle have just managed the game well. Tottenham's had a couple of good attacks. Could have scored probably a couple of goals, but um, overall, Newcastle have uh, dominated this football match and Tottenham have been so, so disappointed. So 15 minutes plus out of time still to play. Cleared away by Hoybier for Tottenham. Headed out of play by Botman for Newcastle. Will be a Tottenham throw. I, I suppose the, the biggest question 
And it's almost a, a microcosm of the conversation that we've been having around both of these sides this season. It's where do both sides go from here? I mean, Newcastle clearly on the up. Tottenham. Well, the thing with New Tottenham is, is you know, they've had a lot of managers over the last two, three seasons, two seasons, and you know, none of it's worked. Um, they've got no identity on how they play. They used to be an attack and entertain inside. Newcastle, you know, I'd, let's be honest, four or five bad seasons where they were just basically happy to stay in the Premier League. But they've grew, and uh, they've got an identity now on the front foot. Tottenham on the front foot for now. Son Heung-min outside the penalty area, played it behind Dan Juma. Mankio will get there first, but good pressure by Son. Plays it out of play for a Tottenham throw deep in Newcastle territory. Taken by Perisic, Newcastle 6, Tottenham 1 here on 5 Live. West Ham 4-0 up against Bournemouth in the Premier League's other 2 o'clock kickoff. Here is Romero, squares it to Davinson Sanchez. Out to the right-hand side, interchanges passes with Poro, but well anticipated by Dan Byrne, who's bursting down that left wing for Newcastle. Sanchez does well, comes back, gets a foot in, plays it back to Romero, and now collected by Hoybier, back to Sanchez once more. I mean, the irony is, Chris, having been subbed off as a sub for tactical reasons, we should say, in the last match against Bournemouth, having not been trusted to start in a back three, by Christian Cellini. He's come on, Davinson Sanchez, and he's probably been Tottenham's best player. He's, uh, I'll give that a lot of credit. He could easier hit. He hasn't. He's got the ball. He's tried to play. He's competed. He's put tackles in. Uh, you can't fault that, what he's done. And it's and it's not easy. Uh, there's a lot of players who have got great reputations of just uh, let Tottenham down today. Yeah, it's been a chastening afternoon for them. It's been one for Newcastle that shows that they really are going to establish themselves with the very elite in the English game. And you think back to the last time that Tottenham came here. It was the first match, in fact, after the takeover happened. Tottenham won 3-2. A lot of water under the bridge since then. As Tottenham have this free kick over on the right-hand side. Can they find... One more goal back. 6-1 they trail. Harry Kane's in there. He scored in his second half. Poro's delivery is a good one. Kane was up there. Newcastle make first contact. Picked up by Dantuma on this left-hand side. Lays it off to Son. Central position. 25 yards out. Joe Linton's there. So Son will play it back to Hoybier. Hoybier drifts the ball into the penalty area. Headed back across. Looking for Romero. Intercepted by Newcastle. And will be played forward by Anthony Gordon. And now Newcastle are countering. And it's almost four on two. Here is Joe Willock racing towards the penalty area. Willock still going. Lays it off to Gordon. Tries to play it past Forster. Brilliant clearance by Perisic. Off the goal line. It's out for a Newcastle corner. Ah, look at that, Newcastle cavalry charge there, wasn't there? There were six of them running forward. There's only four Tottenham players really making that effort to get back. And then eventually they get it away for a corner to Newcastle. Anthony God, be disappointed he didn't score there. Yeah, they just did enough, didn't they, Tottenham? Forster making himself big. And it was a brilliant clearance at the back for Tottenham to prevent the ball spinning into the net. So Gordon over this corner for Newcastle from the far side. Joe Linton and Wilson, just two of the black and white shirts in there. The height of Botman is there as well. Romero, though, makes first contact with the header. Willock urged to shoot, 30 yards out, plays it to the left-hand side instead. And Anthony Gordon, Newcastle 6, Tottenham 1, here on BBC Radio 5 Live. Picked up by Almiron, left-hand side. Little jinking run from the Paraguayan. Now Gordon will pick it up. Still on the left, Newcastle taking on Porro. Then a little push on... Pedro Porro, who did get a touch and the push wasn't enough, says David Coote to give Tottenham a free kick, so it's a Newcastle corner. He struggled today, Porro, I think. He struggled last time as well and against Bournemouth. But, um, you know, Newcastle, they're talking about saying a lot of players who it's not worked out for a few of them, has it? Where Newcastle, everybody seems to come at the team, seems to do a job. So Anthony Gordon over this corner once more for Newcastle. Swung high to the edge of the six-yard box. A little bit of a scramble. Comes to Joe Linton. Blocked on the edge of the six-yard box. Fierce shot. Shouts for handball from the crowd rather than the Newcastle players. And Tottenham do clear. Uh, oh, free kick that. Yeah, Joe Willock. a free kick to Tottenham, the referee, yeah, David Joe, Joe Willock stops on from spinning in behind for that long ball down the side of the right, right side of uh, the field there. And he, the referee got that right. But uh, again, 
it's so easy for Newcastle. The ball comes in the box. It throws the job to another Newcastle player. Yes, the block did Tottenham eventually, but you know it's not like Tottenham have got small guys in the team. The three centre halves are big. Harry Kane's big. Dunjuma almost feeding Harry Kane, as Chris Waddle just mentions him there. He's come together, Dunjuma and Joe Linton. Both players have stayed down. Dunjuma's still down as Joe Linton gets up to his feet as Jamal Sells will pick it up at the back for Newcastle. Joe Linton's saying play it to my feet. Lascelles is thinking about putting it out and does eventually do so. So Dunjuma can get a bit of treatment. Eddie Howe stands, arms folded on the edge of his technical area, but he will be grinning inside. And worth noting as well, I mean, we've mentioned the defeat last match against Aston Villa, which was Newcastle's poorest performance, really, of the season. It was also their heaviest defeat of the season, and to respond like this. But, but again, we mentioned it at the time, the way that Newcastle came out, three goals in the opening nine minutes. They're only the sixth side in Premier League history to score that many goals that early on in a Premier League match. But, but Tottenham, A, knew that, but Tottenham have also had a very good record at St James's Park in, in recent years, winning six of the last eight games. We mentioned the 3-2 victory here last season in the first match since the takeover. And of course, the takeover's changed things at Newcastle. It's brought them Eddie Howe, it's brought them resources, it's brought debate and conversations about sports washing and human rights and all of that. But it's something that they knew they would face this Tottenham and the credit that has to go to the players that, that Eddie Howe has assembled and marshaled and a lot of players that have been here before the takeover you look at Almiron you look at Joe Linton he's taken them to new heights and Tottenham have managed that over the years and yes it's a different challenge now coming to St James's Park on the pitch although the atmosphere has always been a challenge for teams coming here but but they just have failed to deal with it so spectacularly Oh, listen, I, I, I mean, you look at Tottenham's results over the last two months and um, this isn't a surprise when you actually look at the results and the performances. Yes, they've, had, they've won a few games, a couple of games where people didn't think they'd win. Um, but I think it's a style of play as well. The sun's coming off now as Richardson's coming on for, what, eight minutes? Um, I don't see the sense in that, but... Um, well, if you look at Tottenham's results over the last two or three months, they've been so patchy. You don't know what you're going to get with Tottenham. And again today, they've turned up and they've been absolutely, well, Newcastle's run them right in 20 minutes and won the game. So, a club watch champ chasing Champions League. And by the way, they only lost 1 0 to Milan, didn't they, in the Champions League? So, it, you know, it's a team which I think it's the identity of what Tottenham used to be was a bit like Liverpool, Man City, the way they played. Now, the last four, five, man, three managers have gone onto the back foot and played counter attacking football which they've had no joy with let's be perfectly honest and the fans don't like it neither here is Joe Willock plays it back into the Newcastle half seven minutes plus out of time to play Newcastle six Tottenham one well if you talk about Tottenham's trajectory what about Newcastle's then it is clear that the only way appears to be up and as we hear the Olays coming out from St James's Park again this fan base and this stadium has always been such a positive to them and as they look to build and continue to strengthen the squad and, and move up into those very very upper echelons of the English game this was always going to be such a strength oh, for them. listen since the, the the group took over they've uh, brought in a few players we know that I wouldn't say there were big names where you thought you know let's be honest Isaac and a lot of them people were like Uzi even when Gunnar is coming from Leon, a lot of people said to me, Who's this, who is he? Um, they've, they've, they've done well in the transfer market. It's worked for them. The big step now is to get the Champions League. What are they going to add to it? Because the Champions League is a different league. We know that. It's, it's, it's very difficult to go far in that tournament. Will his squad go well in that tournament? Not really. Um, you know, it's, it's a hard tournament to, to compete in. But that's what the aim was. And they'll address it. They'll, they'll buy players who well, they think will be able to cope in the, in the Champions League. And Newcastle's a club on the up. They're going forward. Here comes Hoybier as Tottenham come forwards, but it's well intercepted by Javi Manquillo. Now Miguel Almiron on the turn. Lays it off to Joe Willock. He plays it forwards to Anthony Gordon. Newcastle looking for a seventh late on here against Tottenham. Burn. Almiron, edge of the area, almost found Gordon. Comes back to Almiron, 20 yards out. Well closed down by Hoybier. Now Manquillo picks it up for Newcastle, urge to shoot, doesn't score many, Javi Manquillo. 
Now Almiron, edge of the area once again, little one-two with Willock, Almiron into the box, brilliant feet, can he pick out a teammate, Angles disappeared for the shot, Mankio is found, swings the ball across, it's a poor delivery, and Dan Byrne will keep it in on the left-hand side. They get another goal, Newcastle, it will equal Tottenham's worst Premier League defeat in their history, which was two Newcastle at St James's Park, as Gordon tries to win the corner, but it's good defending in the end, and ball goes out of play for a Tottenham goal kick. Yeah, well, you know, I can only praise uh, Newcastle as much as you can. Eh? They've been excellent. And, uh, you know, they, they, they got a good hammering last week at Villa. Villa were excellent. Villa's in good form. Uh, and they found uh, weaknesses in uh, Newcastle. And uh, that was basically Ollie Watkins running behind. Tottenham haven't got anybody who's done that today. Um, plus, they kind of defend Tottenham. They started with uh, probably the weakest back four I've seen in the Premier League. Uh, and uh, they got punished, and rightly so. It was the wrong decision to play the players they did at the back four, and it's cost them massively. Ball straight out of play from Fraser Forster for a throw to Newcastle. Yeah, it was one of those where we were both sitting there before the match thinking, OK, well, it, it looks like it has to be a four, but we can't really understand why he would do that. So could Hoybier possibly play it centre-half? Could Skip pos Is he really going to go away from the three? But why would he do that anyway? It's cost Tottenham, but the whole performance has cost Tottenham, even when they did switch to the three. After a while, when they settled into it, it paid off. But Newcastle still scored twice more after they made the change. The ball is over the top, looking for long stuff in the area. Perisic wins the header. Dyer won't get there ahead of Almiron, though. Romero will, as Almiron sent it back in. Jamal Sells will bring it down midway through the Tottenham half. And Newcastle just suddenly, because though they're in the mood for the seventh, Chris Waddle. Well, see, Tottenham now... 6-1 is bad enough, I'm not saying it's terrible 6-1, don't get me wrong, but 7 is, you know, let's be honest. I mean, Newcastle's played well and they've really, they, they play like they play, they're a really consistent team, Newcastle. They're always high tempo, they move the ball. Yes, they have the odd blip now and again and they've drew a few and lost to Villa, but, you know, they've played this way all season. Attitude, brilliant, professional. They compete, you know, it's very hard to beat Newcastle. If you win, you've got to work hard to beat them. Now, you look at the opposite here with Tottenham. When Tottenham get beat, it's sort of what's happened to Tottenham. How bad are Tottenham? You know, and this consistency bit is it must be driving whoever gets in charge uh, of this football club. I've got a lot of work to do. Yes, evinced by the performance today, but more broadly as well. You could not find a starker contrast, really, between these two sides at the moment. Even though coming into this game, just three points separated them. It won't be now. Newcastle will be six clear with a game in hand. As for Charleston. Picks it up on the right-hand side. Drives the ball across oh. Danjuma. Oh, good save, Pope. Caught that very nicely, Danjuma. Pope beats it away. And no one from Tottenham following up. So Pope can advance out of his six-yard box and gather the ball as well. Caught that nicely, yeah, Danjuma. Well, he's, he's another player. Why is he not playing? You know, Tottenham's not playing great. As I said, that, you know, you, you can argue that defensively the bad because they do concede goals every game. Um, but why is Danjuma? They brought him in and you thought, right, play him. He's a talented player. He can dribble. His goal record is good. He can, he, that was a great chance, great save. Um, he's looked a threat since he came on. So why does he not play? Yeah, arrived in January from Villarreal. Danjuma as Tottenham have it just inside their own half. Still waiting for his first start in the Premier League. I did see chat from Tottenham Hotspur fans online that this might have been the game, as you say, to, well, to put him in. I, I mean, unfortunately, he can't play um, in the back four, which <laughs> they need. That's the problem. Newcastle with the interception, here is Willock into the Tottenham half, approaching the final minute of normal time as Romero gets there ahead of Anthony Gordon, steers it back to Fraser Forster, who clears the ball straight out of play for well, a Newcastle be, United throw. It'll be very interesting, I feel for the manager, I've got to say, he's been stuck into a job there where he's obviously looking at other things, uh, uh, so I do feel for him, I think it'll be difficult. It's the players who need the responsibility and take the blame, Mick, not the manager. Goal at Bournemouth, John Akers. Oh, it's another one for West Ham. It's a brilliant afternoon for them and David Moyes after their European success in the week. It's Corne, the substitute. So much time to pick his place in the penalty area after a low cross on the right-hand side. I think this might be Vard, actually. He looks off to me. It, as it stands, it's Bournemouth nil, West Ham five, and we are into stoppage time. Thank you, John. Commentary of the final few moments over on five sports extra match of the day two will be good today <laughs> do you know i was just thinking as newcastle have it midway through the tottenham half and the la's come out again leading by six goals to one those west ham players whether this goal stands or not 
are going to come off the pitch thinking we're definitely first on match of the day too. No, and they're yeah, going to be disappointed yeah, they be. because it's going to be the match from here at St James's <laughs> Park on match of the day two on BBC One from 10.30. Don't miss it, Newcastle fans, Tottenham fans, you might want to. Almiron, edge of the box. Will it step in? It's deflected. Fraser Forster, not under too much pressure from Wilson. Comes and claims, but he's got his goal coming off the bench. Callum Wilson in this second half as we enter three minutes of added time. Is this the best performance you've seen from no, Newcastle no, all season? No, no, no. I think I've, I've seen Newcastle play well. Let's head back to Bournemouth. What happened with that goal in the end, John? Yeah, it did get Vard offside. Corne would have been his first West Ham goal as well. It's Bournemouth nil, West Ham four. Thank you, John. No, going back to Newcastle, I think they've played like this on many, many occasions without getting the goals. Um, this was always a concern. Who's going to score the goals for Newcastle? Well, uh, they did create chances, but never took them. And today they've took them. Um, but they have played better uh, overall in a game. Um, but I've got to say the the opposition they played today have been absolutely woeful. Dyer goes down, wins a free kick for Tottenham midway through the Newcastle half. And I think that's it. It's worth emphasising again. Your Tottenham you know we're running out of the superlatives but but were so shambolic defensively but Newcastle was so clinical it seemed every single time they came forward they managed to find the back of the net five goals in the opening 21 minutes as the ball rolls out of play for a Newcastle goal kick 6-1 after both sides scored in this second half let's head to the Gallagher Premiership Adam Whitty. Saracens try with seconds left of the half and now they lead by 13 points to 10 over London Irish. Alex Goo charging down the left wing to score with a Farrell conversion after a long TMO wait. Saracens have turned this around. They lead by 13 points to 10 at half time. And to the Super League, Salford Catalan, Dave Woods. Six and a half minutes to go, Salford 16, Catalan 10. Catalan putting a lot of pressure on at the moment, trying to get the points that might take this into Golden Point extra time. But it's Salford 16, Catalan Dragons 10. And to Wolfsburg Arsenal in the Women's Champions League, Mas Faruqi. Arsenal still trailed 2 knew their best chance. A ball flashed across the area from a cave, which Blackstonies just couldn't reach. Wolfsburg 2, Arsenal 1. Here at St James's Park. The home fans are getting ready to celebrate. They've been doing so since the early stages of the first half because this has been simply superb from Newcastle United. It's been simply shambolic from Tottenham Hotspur. Their Champions League hopes surely are over. And Newcastle United look very well set indeed for the top four. Still got to close it out, still games to play, but they're heading six points clear of Tottenham in fifth and they'll still have a game in hand. Tottenham coming forward though. Perisic... As they look to get on the score sheet once more. Dispossessed outside the penalty area. And here comes Almiron. Christian Stellini trying to marshal on the touchline as Newcastle come forward. Manquillo will let that ball roll out of play. Little deflection off Dyer on the way through. But no time to take the throw. What a time to be a Newcastle United fan. An outstanding performance at St James's Park. They blew Tottenham away inside the opening 21 minutes. 5-0 up they were. It finishes 6-1. Newcastle very much set for the top four. Tottenham's Champions League hopes, realistically, are surely over. Their malaise continues. But the only way is up for Newcastle United. It finishes at St James's Park. Newcastle 6, Tottenham 1. Chris Waddle. Well, I've got to say, well done, Newcastle United. have been excellent, very professional. Very, uh, the way that the attitude's first class, Newcastle. I've seen them a lot this season. And this is what you get from them. They're honest, they work. They have got very good players. And you can see why they're in the top four. As for Tottenham, they need to write a get the script up and rewrite it and get a manager in who's going to play entertaining for on the front foot what the fans want to see and they might have to get rid of a few to get a few ones in but it's going to be a big big ask for Tottenham to come back to that top four Tottenham's players are going over to the fans who have saved and several of them are applauding back the fans and again that, that's credit to them it's been dire it's been diabolical from Tottenham but the black and white flags are waving around us at St James's Park nothing but praise from the Newcastle fans for their side a huge win a thumping win an emphatic win for Newcastle 6-1 they beat Tottenham and the celebrations for the home side at St James's Park mirrored by the celebrations for the away side at Bournemouth. John Aiken.